It's a little frigid, but that's okay. Hopefully we uh, warm you up, at least with the thought of uh, you're not that far away from Super Bowl. You're going to see the Pro Bowl festivities this coming weekend. You are uh, going to see all that coming to you from Las Vegas. And uh, today we are going to be uh, we're going to be embroiled in fish fry Friday and beverages and all kinds of fun before uh, Mike Fleming and I and the staff. We uh, with one minus one Ben Kenny, which is disappointing, but uh, we are going to be heading to uh, Arizona after the program, heading out to Arizona the Super Bowl and uh, getting ready for that. So good day to you, Ben. I uh, heard you on the morning show today. So you've been up for quite a while, huh? Yeah. Sorry to hear that that you listened to that. <laughs> I like it. Who was it uh, from the uh, the Ballards that you had the girl from yes. the Ballards in today? I was listening to that yes. when I was setting up early this morning. So you're talking about baseball. So you uh, you were pining for a catching position. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, not to get into it, but I, I had very <laughs> low I had low dreams when I was a child. I wanted to either be on, on those people that jump on the trampolines at basketball games during oh, like yeah. kind of quarter. Stuff I thought it was so cool. Right. Or I wanted to be the bullpen catcher of the Phillies, not make the team or anything. I, I wanted to be the bullpen so catcher. So you weren't setting so cool. your goals as a child very high. You just wanted to be a part of the team. You didn't really necessarily feel that you had the ability, skill, or wherewithal to be actually a major league baseball player. Oh, correct, correct. I was very aware, <laughs> I guess, which is a good trait. Um, plus, I, I don't know. Some of the bullpen catchers have been around for a while. Yeah, I remember I got Sal Fasana yeah. caught for like 10 years. Marcus Hamill was with the Brewers for God, a decade and a half. I mean, he was there a long time. So I absolutely, I get it. You, you know, you can, and the best part about it is when you're on the road with the team, you still get the site. You know, you get a salary. It's not a you know, billion dollar deal, but you still get the site. You still get, you know, the, the money that the major league guys are getting. So you're getting the 220 bucks in cash to go out and hang out and all that kind of stuff. You're still part of that group, so that's not okay. really good. I was thinking more you got to run in. You get to run in from the bullpen when there's a fight. Oh really? Oh, okay, I never thought of that. See, I, I don't I don't go for the CU Philly guys go for violence right away. No wonder Cena got the help he got. No wonder. 1968 though. Right. I know. Uh, so today we got the senior bowl coverage. Um, was there anything breaking today that I did not see regarding Senior Bowl coverage and the Green Bay Packers and the quarterback quest and the the you know saga that is? I didn't see anything. I didn't want to see anything. I was hoping there wasn't anything. Today we just need a breather day today. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get enough of it, enough chatter about that coming up next week as everybody on Radio Row uh, chats about it and such. But uh, I just was there any chatter that I missed? Did you guys talk about anything? In no, and, and the Senior Bowl isn't normally the top, top uh, prospects. Right. So if there was big drama, it would be with those guys. No, the Packers met with Max Duggan yesterday, the TCU quarterback. He was like a fifth-round, sixth-round guy. Right. I didn't really think there was anything. Okay. I'm just making sure because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm perusing stuff, and the only thing that I saw mentioned about any quarterback was the former quarterback, uh, and it explains a lot. Did you, did you read the Tony Romo story? I did, yeah. It explains a lot. Um, and it's, it's when Tony Romo first came out and he retired from football and the broadcast booth, he was right up there. Hit, now I know there's some people that don't like Colin Ford. I think Colin Ford's fantastic. Um, you know, now he tends to go overboard and praise people a little bit too much, but. I think he's fantastic. And, but Tony Romo, man, he was the standard. I mean, he came out swinging because he was fantastic in the way he called a game and, and analyzed the game. And then it's like, I, I, you and I had a conversation off the air. I, I said, was he drunk? Did he take a gummy before he went on the air, before he did the, the AFC Championship game? I, he just, he sounded stupid, didn't he? Yeah, it's been that way since really his first year, which I think he had all the film study and he had the knowledge because he had just been playing. Right. The further away we get, the less I think he adds to the broadcast. You don't hear anything that you didn't know, that you learned. You just hear, oh, I don't know, Jim. I think they're going to have to step up. Well, he would say things that were both sides. 
You know, I don't know, Jim. It's like they're, they're, they can throw a pass over here to try to pick up the first down or run it. Like, what? What the hell are you talking about? But that was the kind of stuff that he was bringing to the table recently. And I, I, so now that you find out that CBS actually tried to have an intervention, and I, now they did not say anything to the effect of, say, he's got a drinking problem or a gummy problem or anything like that. But I said on that broadcast, he didn't sound right. He, he didn't even sound intellectual. He sounded like a giggly little high school kid that couldn't believe he was in the broadcast booth and knew not a whole lot about the game of football. That's what he sounded like. And so... Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was it. That was it. So I, I, I thought to myself, boy, I wonder if you know, he was like out too late the night before, you know, whatever, you know. And now you find out that they actually sat him down and said, dude, you need to hit the film study. I mean, they paid him a lot of money. He's in the midst of a 10-year contract, isn't it? Isn't it like 10 years? Um, was it almost $200 million or something like that that they're paying him? Some kind of crazy 180, money. yeah. 180, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, they're paying him a chunk of money. Now, he may be looking at that going, you know what? Hey, <laughs> you know, Fox is giving Tom Brady. Well, it's Tom Brady with all the ratings, but they're giving Tom Brady close to four hundred million dollars for ten years. Well, what about me? You know what I mean? But for what he's doing right now, you know, man, he he has slipped a lot. Holy mackerel! Now you find out that CBS, the executives, actually went to him and said, "Dude, you need to do a little more study. You need to actually show up and quit trying to hit the uh, quit trying to hit the golf course so much and actually come in and do a few things. You know that are going to you know help you better at your be better at your job. I I don't know." Uh, maybe that, now that it's out, you wonder what he's going to say. You know what I mean? Now that this story is broken and um, he, he's kind of been publicly outed, you wonder what's going to happen. If he's actually going to say, you know, hey, I, I apologize. And then the whole, did you hear what they said about Nance? Nance is out, you know, the guy, the executive just basically said, uh, you know, because Jim Nance isn't helping Tony at all. You know, he just basically said, Nance is out for Nance, he doesn't care. And I was like, wow! You know, you're talking about cutting down your own broadcast crew, holy mackerel. Right? So, well, and, think about why this came out. To me, at least, the story coming out today is because Romo was getting crushed after the game. It seems like CBS is saying, we know, we're trying. Right. But it's on him. Right. They're distancing themselves. No, I 100% I agree. But I also remember that awkward segment where they say, okay, we're going to do the stand up. Here we go. And they're coming back from commercial break. And Jim Nance says, you know, Tony, you know, whatever. Joe Burrow, a lot of pressure. And Tony's eating. He's eating. It's, I thought that was funny. I thought it was funny, but I'm like, I, I, I was sitting there watching that and I'm thinking to myself, how did you not know that you're you're going on? You're going to do a stand-up. It's not like the, the director in the booth did not say, "Hey guys, we're coming to you in 10, 9, 8, view camera, whatever." Because you, you can hear all this. I mean, I've been a part of this before when I've done television, and they tell you, you know, you. So okay, so you're standing up, you're pulling the wire down behind your back, you've got your coat on, you've got your hands in the triangle position, you know, and you know, okay, cue Jim, Jim go. You know, hey, Tony, you know, what about, and then Tony's like, he's opening up, you know, gummy mints or whatever the hell he's eating. <laughs> and then Jim asks him a question, he's like, oh, I don't, why are you going to me with food in my mouth, Jim? Well, how the hell do you not know they're coming to you? So, yeah, Tony Romo, man, he is, uh, he has slipped quite a bit. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, anyway, 877-867-1670, 877-867. 1670. If you want to give us a shout, uh, by all means, go ahead and do so. At 877-867-167. Love to have you on board. So uh, go ahead and give us a shout there. Uh, what else do we have here for you? We've got a lot of stuff going on today. Um, what else? We gonna... I do have an apology to make, Bill. Do you? For what? So yesterday I called Punxsutawney Phil a fraud. Yes. And questioned whether he actually had any skills. Okay. Um, he said six more weeks of winter. And it's cold as ever today. So, touche. 
right? Mia culpa. Um, well, he uh, he got one day right, but you basically labeled labeled him and his life a fraud. And then we took it to the next level when the Canadian version of Puxatawney Phil, Frank the Groundhog, was dead. Which, by the way, out of all this stuff we did on the show yesterday, that is the thing that got the most play. That's the thing that got the most play. Was, was the fact that Fred the Groundhog from, uh, from, from Canada, they poked him to come out of the hole. And he was dead. How does that happen? <laughs> That's what I want to know. How does that happen? How does your how's your groundhog dead and you don't know it? Don't you shake the box or something before you bring it up on stage? Oh my goodness. I and I feel bad for the groundhog. I don't know how old he was. I don't know if he died because, you know, natural causes or if, you know, the shock of maybe he didn't want to go out in winter. He he didn't want to go out in the cold. So he brought him out in the cold and he froze to death or something. I don't know. Felt bad about it. But yeah, Frank the groundhog croaked off. R.I.P. Fred. Oh, yeah, right there. Scott says R.I.P. Fred. Uh, 877-867-1670. If you want to find us, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Giannis last night, uh, 50 burger uh, last evening. And late game last night, 9 o'clock start, by the way, in case you did not know, down at the Fiserv Forum. And uh, even uh, Charles Barkley talking about during the broadcast. I was watching a little bit of that last night. And uh, Charles Barkley talking about, you know, hey, wait a minute. Why, why are they going to a 9 o'clock game? In uh, in Milwaukee, and then there's you know panning around the crowd, and there's kids in the crowd and all that kind of stuff. And oh, wait a minute, you why why are they why are the kids up so late? Who cares? Giannis dropping fifty four. If I'm a kid and I went there and saw Giannis drop fifty four and nineteen, I'm all geeked. Especially over a win, getting a one hundred six one hundred five win over the Clippers last night. So the Bucks go to thirty five and seventeen on the season, but they are twenty two and five at the five serve, getting it done. So. Good stuff from the Bucks last evening as they get uh, yet another win. And they're playing. You know, they are, I'll say this, and I, I talked about this the other day. I said, look, it's concerning because defensively they sucked. They have not been playing good basketball. As of late, they're playing better, but they also haven't been healthy. But when you give up numerous, not just one or two, but numerous 25, 20-plus 20 point leads and losing games, especially late third, early fourth quarter when you're allowing teams to get big runs on you, it's, you know, either your bench is bad or you just you just have no desire to play defense at all. None. And uh, they've kind of turned that around. Uh, the Bucks have now won six straight after uh, maybe it was after my little rant. Who knows? Not to say that they all listen to this program. But uh, since then, they have gone on to win six straight. And uh, they now sit at 35 and 17, only a couple of games behind Boston uh, in the uh, in the east. So uh, in Boston, 37 and 15 Boston with the best win record in the, uh, in the NBA, uh, the bucks only a couple of games behind them. So bucks not playing too bad, but when the bucks are healthy, I, I think if, when they're completely healthy and I know I saw the interview with Chris Middleton where he said, Hey, look, uh, there's certain things I just can't do yet. Uh, he's working himself back into it. And he said, you know, when I can, I will. And there's certain things that he can do and he can do well. I, I think when Middleton is finally back healthy and the, the whole thing with the uh, trade deadline approaching, and the, the possibility of Crowder and such, um, I, I think this team will be honed and ready to go. And they'll have everything in place, and I, I think they're going to be a really good – I think they're going to be the team to beat in the NBA, quite honest with you. Um, and right now I know the Denver Nuggets are playing extremely good. Memphis, John Morant is just a, a, a scintillating guy to watch. He is like uh, – he can do it inside, he can do it out. The thing about John Morant, not only can he shoot from the outside, but he can go and posterize you even at his size on the inside and does it often. You just, he reminds me of kind of like a, a, a little bit more slender version of like a, a Dwayne Wade where he can play from the outside. He can handle the basketball, but if he wants to go big, he can play big because that guy's got some springs in his getup, man, big time. And I love watching John Rand play. So anyway, uh, Memphis, uh, you know, in second Sacramento, Dallas, uh, and on down from there. So, and uh, on the outside looking in, the Lakers, even though LeBron is closing in on the all-time scoring record, uh, the Lakers still 11 and a half games out of the top spot, but they are two places back uh, out of the postseason right now. The Lakers at 25 and 28, three games under 500, and maybe the trade deadline gives them a little boost. Uh, and who knows before it's all said and done if they can push themselves back into the postseason or not. But um, 
right now the Lakers, and we said it at the beginning of the season, Lakers are not going to be a good basketball team by any stretch of the imagination. 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. If you want to give us a shout, please feel free to go ahead and do so. We are broadcasting live. We're at Stoley's Hog Alley, and uh, it's in Oconomowoc, uh, kind of between Oconomowoc and Delafield. Uh, it has been around a long, long time. And one of the things they are famous for, and we are glad we are here today, is for the fish fry. And uh, I'm sitting here talking to Jeff, and I, I've known Jeff and Alicia for years and years and years, and I love them both. Uh, and they've been longtime sponsors, big supporters. And this, as I am uh, happy to announce, I believe is going to be uh, here, or Stolzol 109, going to be the last stop on the motorcycle ride this year uh, for Fisher House. And they've been big, big supporters of the Fisher House. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to come here, not to mention this brand new place. It's got this, still has the new, new bar smell, the renovated bar smell in it. Um, they are now open for business with the new renovation. And if you're watching on the Bud Light live stream, that is part of the new renovation uh, of the bar here. The old bar still stands, but they renovated it. They gutted it. it uh, it's beautiful. And uh, then come the summertime upstairs, the outdoor deck is going to be available. And uh, it's just, it's an awesome place. So. Anyway, that being said, they've been big supporters of ours, and uh, they wanted to give the grand reopening uh, kind of the, the finishing touch, and we thought, you know what? We'll come here to be a part of it. So it's Fish Fry Friday. Come on out and get yourself some lunch. The doors open up at 11. We're going to be here, obviously, with the broadcast all afternoon, so stay tuned. we got a whole lot more of the Bill Michael Show. It's all coming up right after this. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is the Bill Michael Show. On the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes. Michaels will resume in one minute. Michael will resume in 30 seconds.
Taking us out to Super Bowl 57, we leave, and we'll be in Arizona tomorrow. And, uh, you know, Ben, uh, one of the things that I noticed today, and I did not – remember the other day I was telling you that I, I cracked my phone? Yeah. Okay, so I cracked my phone, and I dropped it actually when I was at the station on Monday. And I put that uh, that resin on the glass that doesn't allow the glass to shatter. So I've got a little chip at the very top of my phone, a little tiny chip, and that's all it is. And I'm like, ah, I can live with that. So today I'm here at Stoli's, and, and this place is beautiful and where I'm at, you know, in the uh, in in the building. And, and you can see it uh, when you're at uh, uh, watching on the, the uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, or on Facebook or whatever, you can see it. I'm right in front of the Harley David design. Beautiful wall. It's a brick wall. And uh, so I thought, well, this is really cool. I'll take a picture. And they've got some cool things on the wall. So I thought I'll take a selfie. The chip in my screen is right in front of the camera lens of my phone. I, I can't take selfies anymore, which some will say that's a good thing. You know, you don't want to. Some would say that is a good right. thing. Right. Yeah. You don't want to transfer the ugliness. But I'm thinking we got a point. Yeah. <laughs> But we've got uh, we've got Super Bowl coming up, and we take a ton of selfies at Super Bowl and a ton of different pictures with backgrounds and such. And I'm like, crap. So what I was going to do today was I was going to get out of here, and then I got to go home, and I got to sort out some of the equipment because we got to lighten the load to take on the plane for all the electronics and such that we ship out there. Uh, so I got to go home and go through that. Now I got to go over to Verizon, and I got to get a new phone. So. That's that's my day. And I didn't want to do that. I've been holding off on getting a phone forever because I just I didn't want to pay for some of the expensive new stuff that's out there. But now it looks like I might have to. So kind of sucks. I just realized that I went to take a selfie. and I'm like, why do I look like that? And then I realized it was just beyond the uh, beyond the ugly factor. It was just it was just there. So there you go. Uh, I'm sure it's just the chip in the screen, Bill. But that was kind of sarcastic. You know, I'm glad we're not working in this studio today. That was that was a little shot. I believe that. So, <laughs> um, the uh, Jeff says, did you see the Rogers remark this morning on Get Up from Pebble Beach? I did not. I did not. What was said? I would love to know. That was what we played yesterday about San Fran. Yeah, I was going to say that was not. Uh, that was yeah. OK, so we're ahead of the game. You know what? You know what you could have said, Jeff, instead of asking me that question, you should have said, hey, did you see they re-ran what you guys talked about yesterday on your show? They must be listening to you. Damn straight. We're all over the world, man. That's why they call it the World Wide Web. Hell yes. Broadcasting live at Stoley's Hog Alley. We are out here in Oconomowoc. Come on by. They're going to open the doors at 11, and he has got the world-famous fish fry from Stoley's coming up with the salted rye bread. Oh, it's so good. And uh, we're going to be here all, all afternoon, so come on by. I'm brought to you by our friends at Bud Light. Um. Ben, so I, I heard you guys talking, you, you and Rowdy. Uh, do you guys differ on what the Green Bay Packers should be doing when it comes to Jordan Love? Um, because uh, you talked specifically about people that say, here come the, the 70s and the 80s. And I was listening, and I caught part of the conversation, but I wanted to touch base in in the sense that you were right in saying two things. One is, it's... You know, once you got to the 70s into the 80s, free agency became more prevalent. Now, the money and the movement wasn't nearly as as, as big as it is now, but it, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's grown over the years, and obviously with the contracts, the guaranteed money, voidable years, uh, out clauses, and all that kind of stuff, roster bonuses, and all, it's just become very convoluted. However, I agree. I, I think you said it. Did you say that it, you're, you're not going to live in anonymity for a long time as long as you're not the Browns or the Houston Texans, correct? Yeah. Yeah. If you have intelligent people running the ship, which I think the Packers do, right. then it's not that challenging to get back to relevancy. Yeah. I, uh, uh, there, there's two things I wanted to get into in that. And one is I do believe in the Packers. I, I think the first couple of years of Gutekind's, um drafts, uh, if you want to go back to that, first couple of years with the drafts, um, you could probably say, while they seemed good at the time, long, you know, the only thing you can ever tell is longevity as to whether or not it's actually going to amount to anything. They didn't really amount to much. I think we can all agree upon that. Okay. Um, you go back to, you know, Jair Alexander, Josh Jackson, Oren Burks, and all that kind of stuff, Jamon Moore, 
Uh, but you did have Marquez Valdez Scantling. You, you got a punter out of that, which never turned out to be anything great. Uh, EQ, Equinemia St. Brown was in that draft. Uh, and then you got, what, Rashawn Gary, Darnell Savage Jr., Elton Jenkins the next year. So you got your first three guys, your starters. But after that, uh, you know, just uh, was it Sternberger, Kingsley Kiki, um, trying to think, uh, Dexter Williams, even though Dexter Williams kind of been back and forth as a running back for the Packers. Um, there was Ty Summers. He was a good special teams player, but he was a seventh round draft choice. Uh, I think I'm me- missing somebody in that draft. But anyway, those were okay. Since then, they have been better. And But what all the people, everybody focuses solely on Jordan Love. And I understand that because I said, look, that is going to be your 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 legacy if you're Brian Gutekunst that's going to be your legacy because that is the pick that was not only untimely but also controversial and really has forced now two three going on possibly four years of anxiety for Packers fans Aaron Rodgers will he or won't he you know because if if you don't have Jordan Love chances are you're now looking for a quarterback and you probably have some kind of a, a retread as a backup or something like that. And and, George, and Aaron Rodgers has been Aaron Rodgers. He's just been that guy, and who knows if he would have or would not have had the back-to-back MVP seasons. But that kind of triggered everything. So that's where he's going to be judged. But I agree that you could turn it around if you have good scouting personnel and a good general manager. You can turn things around relatively quickly in the National Football League. It's no longer a five-year rebuild. Uh, it's usually, when you start to see signs of good, it's usually two to three. You know, Now, that's provided you got a good quarterback. You know, Now, if let's say they, they're going to bank on Jordan Love and they jettison Rodgers or they keep Rodgers for one more year and then they have Jordan Love now under contract, so it's the switch off. Rodgers is gone after next. Jordan Love then becomes the guy and Jordan Love is not the guy then you've invested a lot of time and more money and another contract and a guy that's not the guy. So for at least two years, you can build the team around him, but he's not the guy. You need somebody to come in and be the guy. The problem is the way championship teams are built, and you're finding this in Philadelphia, is once you start to commit to the the, the remake or reload or rebuild, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to label it, once you commit to that, then you have to be able to bring the talent together and it all has to rise to the top, then be piecemealed by a couple of free agents here or there. It all has to come together at the same time, a la the Green Bay Packers in 2010. When they started the process by drafting Aaron Rodgers, and then they started the process by saying, we're going to get a, just best available player. We're just going to get the best available guys. And then it started to kind of culminate. You saw some of the young guys. You had a couple of free agents you brought in, and then they pulled Brett Favre out of that mixture. They got their guy with one year under his belt, said, get some experience, here you go. And then all that talent started to culminate all at the right time, and then they went on to win a Super Bowl. And then the rest is obviously history. So if you're going to do that, you got to have, one, you got to have a quarterback in your stable. But two, all the, it's not just about getting talent and just putting it on the team and keeping it around. It's about getting all that young talent with piecemeal free agents all together at the right time to all crescendo at the right time. So you're right. It's not a five-year, six-year, 10-year process anymore. But if you don't have the right quarterback and you don't get all that young talent to come together at the right time, that's what the Bears have been missing. Because the Bears the Bears had a hell of a defense years ago. A hell of a defense. Their offense sucked. Their quarterback sucked. They banked on Mitch Trubisky. Again, if you don't have the right guy, you're going to suck swamp water for years. And that's exactly what they did. So by the time they got Justin Fields and their offense had deteriorated, now it's time for a lot of the older aging guys on that defensive front that they had paid big money for. It's time to go away. And some of the guys they drafted were were already going into their second contract. They were letting them go. They moved Rokon Smith. They, they started moving other guys. And all of that, it, 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 the quarterback came after the crescendo of the defense, and now the defense has regressed, and now they're trying to put more money back into the quarterback and back into the offense, and they're not sure. And it's 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 been a bad algorithm for it's been a bad out bad algorithm for the Chicago Bears. Great for the Green Bay Packers, but it's been a bad algorithm for the Chicago Bears. That's how not to do it. You need it all to culminate in the right place at the right time. And one of the stupidest things they ever did, and one of the most beneficial things they ever did 
for the Green Bay Packers was pick Mitch Trubisky. So uh, let's do this. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Uh, we are broadcasting live at Stoley's Hog Alley. They're going to open the doors coming up here in about a half an hour. So come on by and, and hang out with us. Yeah, we'd love to have you. And it is Fish Fry Friday. They are famous for the fish fry. The potato pancakes, the salted rye bread, the fish itself is fantastic, and different uh, different fish fries to choose from. Uh, I'll go through a little bit of that uh, coming up here shortly, but stay tuned. This portion of the program brought to you by our friends at the Milwaukee Admirals. The Manitoba Moose are in town. If you want some tickets, go to MilwaukeeAdmirals.com. That's MilwaukeeAdmirals.com for any game, single game tickets, group tickets, promotional seats, concerts and such after the game. They're playing some winning hockey. Get down and check them out at the UW Panther Arena. That is our friends at the Milwaukee Admirals. Go to MilwaukeeAdmirals.com. That's MilwaukeeAdmirals.com. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Everywhere you look, from groceries to utilities to gas, prices keep going up. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin can dramatically help lower your energy costs year-round by replacing drafty windows and doors in as little as six weeks. And now you can save even more by taking advantage of 0% interest for up to 48 months when you lock in your prices by February 28th. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Bring the love of Wisconsin's outdoors in through the beauty and quality craftsmanship of Pella Windows and Doors. Whether you're updating or upgrading the look and comfort of your home, Pella has extensive lines of customizable options to meet your needs and your budget, no matter the season. Replacing drafty windows and doors can dramatically lower your energy costs. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin offers some of the most energy efficient windows in the industry. Designed to keep the cold outside where it belongs. Lock in your prices by February 28th and get 0% interest for up to 48 months. Visit PellaWI.com. Bill Michaels will resume in five minutes. Michaels will resume in four minutes. Michael's will resume in three minutes.
Bill Michaels will resume in two minutes. Bill Michaels will resume in one minute. Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. all weekend long so come out to Stoley's Hog Alley and we are brought to you by our friends at Bud Light the official beer sponsor of the Bill Michael Sports Talk Network want to remind you this is uh, this is all the uh, St. Uh, Luck of the Irish month as you know which we're coming up on St. Patrick's Day and if you are looking for authentic Irish cultural music and fun and frivolity uh, there's a lot going on the ICHC Irish Cultural Heritage Center Get a hold of them. They have got a lot of different acts. they got Shane Hennessy coming up next uh, next Saturday, uh, February 11th. Friday the 17th, the Drowsy Lads are going to be there. Cassie, uh, Cassie and Maggie going to be there on Sunday the 26th. So uh, on Friday for uh, the uh, for St. Patrick's Day, uh, on the 17th, the Drowsy Lads are playing at the Irish Cultural and Heritage Center. And all you got to do is two things. One, to get tickets. ICHC.net. ICHC.net. Or call my buddy, Corey, 414-345-8800, 414-345-8800. Good Irish stuff going on over there. Good concerts. They have a bunch of them, too. They booked a bunch that are coming there. Uh, J.P. Cormier and uh, Dave Gunning are coming in March. Uh, Lunasa is coming in March. Also, uh, uh, Alastair uh, Frazier and Natalie Haas are coming in April. They got a lot of different events and a lot of different concerts coming up. So if you love good cultural Italian stuff, Irish cultural and heritage center right there on Wisconsin Avenue, downtown Milwaukee, but go to ICHC.net, ICHC.net, or just call Corey 414-345-8800, 414-345-8800. Again, 414-345-8800. That's the Irish cultural and heritage center. Um, good morning to everybody over in the Bud Light live stream. Say hi to JJ, Chuck, uh, and, and Zach. Uh, if you want to do that, um, so, uh, so want to say hi to everybody. Zach wants to know if we can get Ty Schmidt from the uh, Pat McAfee show on over on radio row. We are, uh, from what I understand, I have not seen the setup yet, Zach, but from what I understood, the setup for us is only 25, 30 feet away from the Pat McAfee studio. So we are hoping uh, we already got a couple of texts out. One is to AJ Hawk, and he responded he wants to do something with us. So we're hoping to get some some of those guys on. We don't have it all booked yet, and I'll be honest with you. Um, I get the information from Ben and Erica. So once Erica, our, who is our on-site producer out in Arizona, 
Uh, once they get it all booked, we'll let you know. But uh, we, yeah, we'll keep trying. We, we, if there's anybody in particular that you know is on Radio Row, let us know, and we'll see what we can do. If you want to hear from somebody, in, uh, you know, specifically, eight seven seven eight six seven sixteen seventy eight seven seven eight six seven sixteen seventy. You want to hit us up? Go ahead and do it. So, so Ben, going back to our discussion real quick, and we were talking about uh, the growth of the Packers. Uh, what I said before we went to break about you got to have all the algorithms. Everything has to peak at the right time for, you know, much like they did in Philadelphia. You know, they kind of said, look, Carson Wentz, we don't think he's going to be the guy. They brought in Jalen Hurts. They kind of moved on. They brought in a couple of decent drafts, a couple of guys, you know, that they needed to supplement it, like in Dominic and Sue, like Linval Joseph and company. They brought in a couple of free agents, and then it all culminates, and here we are now as they're getting ready to uh, land out in Arizona on Sunday for Super Bowl 57. So th- it's kind of understandable in the way I'm kind of describing it, correct? Yeah, it is. Uh, when it comes, like the Packers are different because the Eagles got lucky with Hurts, where he hit. And if he hadn't had hit, like, let's remember Jerry. So Jerry Jones was out here saying that the Eagles and the Rams both went all in and pushed all their chips to the middle, and they're going to suffer the consequences later in order to win. The Eagles have two first round picks this year. Uh Like they're still set up into the future. Right. They just got lucky and all the stars aligned with the Packers. And when it comes to finding the quarterback, I agree with the thought. I guess the argument would be you already have one on your roster that you've developed. So you would have a year to see if he is the guy. And if he's not, you would be pretty well positioned to find another guy. Correct. I, I was absorbing all of that as you're saying it. You are, you are correct. You are correct. So what did the giant safety Julian Love have to say? What, what was he saying about Sirianni? Oh, I, it's a 30-second clip. I have the audio. What, what, so he now, – now, set this up, though. Was this just on a radio show? Or a podcast? He was on he was on Good Morning Football. Okay. And for some reason, he's doing a media tour of some sorts. Yeah. And after getting bludgeoned in the playoffs, he was asked about Sirianni, and then they showed him the videos, which I also cringe at, of Sirianni mean mugging the camera while they're winning. So this is uh, the safety Julian Love of the New York Giants uh, talking about Nick Sirianni, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Taking a listen. He's a guy who really is doing a good job because he's not getting his, in the way of his team. He has an experienced roster uh, from top to bottom, offense, defense. You see this stuff, though? Like, what's your reaction as a player when that guy's doing it? I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it at all. I mean, he's in it for a free ride right now. You guys can coach this team. And- <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's how... Uh, it he's kind of knocking them but to say that they are winning that he's not getting in the way of the team you i, I i've it's, people used to say that and drive me crazy about mike mccarthy too they'd say well you know it's not Mike. Mike's not doing anything. It's, you know, the team is so talented. How could you not win? And that's not true. It's just like with Phil Jackson, when they said, well, Phil, you know, he had Michael. So what the hell? And then you see the last dance and you understand what it takes. It's, it's not so much when you have a talented roster, the X's and O's are unbelievably important. Okay. And usually your coordinators, they really sit down with the head coach and you come up defensively, offensively and such, depending on what your expertise is with a game plan. And you go through that. Okay. I understand all of that, but to say that they're winning in spite of, or he's just not getting in the way. Sometimes a good coach lets him play. You still have to put the X and O's together and you still have to put them in the, in the right place at the right time to be in a position to be successful. And then they go execute that that's on the player. But to say that a head coach doesn't deserve credit for getting a team to the championship is probably one of the most ignorant things you could possibly say because there has to be a there has to be a a a gathering of minds a gathering of egos a practice ethic a, a grouping of all of that to come together and say we are peaking at the right place at the right time to be able to win a championship and i thought mike mccarthy did some of his best coaching during that run in the postseason when they won the championship. I think Mike McCarthy's best coach game, best coach game, and I know some people will disagree, I think his best coach game was 2014 against Seattle. 
I think that there was there was in the third quarter there was a couple of series that they took their foot off the gas. A couple of series. And I thought that was the only flaw in Mike McCarthy's game calling, if you will, where all he was trying to do was run out the clock because they had the lead, they had that that game in command. But they had no business being that competitive against a really good Seattle team with Marshawn Lynch and company, and they were getting it done, and Legion of Boom, and they they were there, man. They were there. And the Packers had no business going out there and winning that game. And they were in position. They came out and just looked crisp. They just looked good in, in a lot of different facets, defensively, offensively. Yeah, they gave up some points, but just everything looked good. But it was minuscule mistakes along the way. More players than anything. Julius Peppers telling Morgan Burnett to go down. Morgan Burnett had nothing but green grass ahead of him. He might have taken it in for a touchdown and pretty much sealed the, the, you know, Wayne Larrabee could have been throwing daggers at that point. So for all of that, I thought Mike McCarthy in a loss coached his best game because he has a way of getting teams prepared to play. And, And they criticize him now, which I find completely funny. They criticize him now for what Dak Prescott did. Dak Prescott sucked. Dak Prescott wasn't throwing accurate passes. Dak Prescott wasn't going through reads. Dak Prescott was so slow to react. And he was under pressure. I understand that. But Dak Prescott Prescott looked bad. And he made the coach look bad. And and you know, I I, I don't I don't know how you used to, you know, Kellen Moore all of a sudden, who was the guru all season long, especially when Cooper Rush was winning games. Oh my God, what an incredible set of play callers and this and that and all the offensive guru that Kellen Moore is. And then all of a sudden Kellen Moore, they have a bad game and Mike McCarthy needs to be fired. Well, he's either calling him or he's not. He's either getting them ready or he's not. He either gets credit for the wins or he doesn't. But you can't just blame the loss on Mike McCarthy and give Kellen Moore and, and company all the credit for the offensive defense. You can't do that. I thought Mike McCarthy had had probably one of his best games when uh, they were going into Seattle, Seattle in 2014. So go back to Nick Sirianni and getting that team ready to play in the postseason and to destroy teams the way they have. Now, granted, they're more talented. I understand that. But to destroy teams the way they did? No, no, no. No, I, I don't take anything away from the head coach that's put his team in the championship. Not at all. Uh, albeit, uh, unless, of course, you're, you know, Ben Kenny and Joe Girardi suck swamp water. No matter what he does and no matter what he wins, he still sucks. Correct, Ben? Well, that part's true. <laughs> We are broadcasting live at Stoley Saw Alley. We are out here in Oconomowoc. Come on out and say hi. We would love to have you along for the ride today. This portion of the program brought to you by our friends over there at the Lux Golf Base. I know it's cold. It's frigid, but it's going to start warm. Do you see the temperatures next week? Uh, it's uh, we, We're actually expecting some rain next week. It's going to be uh, close to 40 a couple of days next week. So even though it's frigid, the, the bays are heated. You can still go out and swing the sticks. L-U-X-E, LuxGolfBays.com. They're in Franklin, Wisconsin. Lux Golf Bays. Dot com, whether it's with a group, yourself, they've got televisions, they've got a bar, they've got food. You can make a day of it, take a couple hours, whatever it happens to be. Go to LuxGolfBays.com. More of the Bill Michael Show live here at Stoley's Hog Alley in Economwalk coming up next. Ready? This is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network.
Bill Michaels will resume in one minute. Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. Oh, that is our friends at Steny, Second and National Walkers Point, Milwaukee. And then they're going to be on Watertown Road in Pewaukee uh, coming soon, probably uh, March, April, somewhere in there. But Steny's excellent, excellent place, great wings, great food. And uh, stop in and tell them why we said hi. But I'll tell you this, if you're going, say, to the, uh, to the, uh, the uh, uh, Admirals game tonight, they run shuttles. If you're going to the Marquette game, Bucks game, UWM game, uh, when the Brewers start up, they run shuttles to every game. They have opening day tickets. They have Packers tickets. You name it. Check out Stenny's. Both Stenny's at 2nd and National and Walker's Point, Milwaukee. And the new one that's coming, not open yet, but will be in Lake Country. That's going to be on Watertown Road down in Pewaukee. Stenny's, you should be here. Home of the award-winning Bloody Mary. Uh, let's do this. Let's get right to it. Our guy, uh, Matt Mitchell, joining us on the hotline from the Ashen Network. Good old boy, Uncle Mitch. Matt, how you doing, man? Doing great. One game left to the NFL season. Can't wait. Uh, anything coming up uh, prop bet-wise that you look at? Because I know everybody starts to look at this stuff. And I don't want to bet on coin flips because I don't want to get into all that goofy stuff. But when you start <laughs> talking about, you know, yards and, and first touchdowns and likelihood of quarterbacks to run for certain yards, pass for certain yards, who picks and things like that, what are some of the prop bets that are more enticing to you when you start to look at that stuff? One of my favorites is just betting on the Super Bowl MVP because we've seen 10 of the last 13 Super Bowl MVPs. They've been under 10 to 1 odds. They tend to be uh, the most predictable person, but typically the starting quarterback. Last year, Cooper Cup won. He was 6 to 1. We've seen like 12 of the last 16 have been 6 to 1 or, or better. So it's, it's often the most likely uh, kind of character. We have a very unusual Super Bowl this year in that the two favorites, Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes, are, are pretty close to even money apiece. So not a lot of value there. But if you do think kind of an outlier performance is possible, you can get some of these guys at insane numbers. You have the starting running back for the, for the Eagles, Miles Sanders, 25 to 1. The starting wide receiver, Devonta Smith, 31 to 1. Uh, and if you want to think like, okay, maybe there's going to be a guy gets a couple of interceptions, falls on a couple fumbles in a game that might be a little weird because the, the quarterbacks might be hurt. That like Trent McDuffie, 240 to one. So if you're looking to have a little bit of fun while you watch, spread out a couple dollars on a couple of random guys, you could do a lot worse than just who do you think is going to win? Pick five members of their defense and put five bucks on each of those guys. Some of those numbers are outrageous. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think uh, the world is saying that Travis Kelsey is going to be the first one to dent the end zone. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a safe that's a safe bet right now. I I don't know if I agree, but a lot of people are on that. Yeah, Travis Kelsey, and then I think if I'm not mistaken, Jalen Hurts is the next one. It's not even a passing touchdown for Jalen Hurts. He would be the next guy. Uh, I think is the next favorite to get into the end zone. That's because they don't mind. Philadelphia doesn't mind using him on quarterback sneaks because he's got the leg strength to do it. It is a fascinating Super Bowl, Bill, because I can't remember the last time both quarterbacks had kind of injury concerns entering a Super Bowl. A lot of rumors that one of the reasons Jalen Hurts was not kind of as sharp as people expected coming back from injury, people kind of blended on jitters, and now we're hearing his shoulder 
might not have been healed in time, and that was causing a lot of those weird passes and overthrows. So there's just so much still up in the air with Mahomes and and Hurts. I don't know how people feel confident about either's performance. Great stuff as always, Matt. We're going to talk again next. Matt, are you going out to the Super Bowl or are you staying comfy at home? No, I am on vacation in beautiful Palm Springs. Uncle oh. Mitch is taking a vacation for the oh, Super Bowl. God, good for you. Good for you. Well, uh, at some point I know we're going to chat again soon, so hang in there. We appreciate it, buddy, and we'll talk to you, okay? Thanks, Bill. There you go. That's our guy, buddy, Matt Mitchell of the Action Network. You can uh, hear his stuff at uh, the Action Network HQ over on Twitter. Good stuff with him. We are broadcasting live. We're at Stoli Sog Alley. We're here uh, for a Fish Fry Friday. We're in Oconomowoc. Come on by, say hi. We got more of the Bill Michael Show. It's all coming up next. is a Wisconsin Sports Zone update. Well, Wisconsin snapped a three-game losing streak last night with a 65-60 win over Ohio State. Badgers did not make it easy on themselves, though. They led by as many as 18 in the second half, and by 15 with 7-18 left, they didn't make another shot from the field, missing their final nine attempts. It allowed Ohio State to get within two before some less free throws from Chucky Hepper and finally ended things. Coach Greg Gard understands it wasn't perfect. And, and we didn't obviously execute well down the stretch the last seven minutes, but um, the good part is we were in a we're in a position where we can learn from it and um, you know, whether it's making free throws or getting better shots down the stretch. Um, but like I said, just overall um, happy for the guys because they've, they've had to endure a lot and, and continue to work and, and give us their best every day. Procedure led the way for Wisconsin with 17 points. Heppard added 15 points. Badgers now five and six in big 10 play sitting in 10th place, but just one game back of six teams that are tied for fourth. Those Northwestern on Sunday, turning the Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo dropped 54 points as Milwaukee stormed back from a 21-point deficit to beat the Clippers. It was his second 50-point game in the last week. They'll host Miami tomorrow. You're worth so much more. Have you ever had the choice to accumulate wealth or go into debt? Let's play Would You Rather. Would you rather have $190,000 in total compensation or be $29,000 in debt? That's the choice between paying for a bachelor's degree that might not even land you a job or an apprenticeship with Iuna that will lead to job security, a pension, stability, and a lifetime of great wages. You're worth so much more. Go to liunawisconsin.org slash join to learn how to accumulate wealth instead of debt. Well, the spring game is returning to Madison after a few years off. New coach Luke Fickle told reporters in Milwaukee last night the game going to be held April 22nd. And everyone's still waiting on Aaron Rodgers to announce whether he's going to return for another season or retire. With this Wisconsin Sports Zone Network update, I'm Zach Heil. Uh, Stoli Tog Alley. If you want to give us uh, a shout, feel free to go ahead and do so. And if you want to chime in on the phone, 877-867-1670. Stoli's is in Oconomowoc and right between uh, Oconomowoc and Delafield. And uh, come on by. Uh, it's still bright, sunny day and uh, beautiful inside this brand new facility, which uh, they renovated. It took them a little extra time, but boy, it was well worth it. And I am uh, really anticipating summertime because up above us, where we are, where the ceiling is, is the new deck that overlooks uh, outside and uh, Lake Upper Nababin and Lower Nababin, and it's just I, I can't wait, can't wait. So uh, give us, uh, you know, give us a little opportunity if you want to come out and say hello and have yourself a fish fry or a nice lunch, whatever it happens to be. Stoli's Hog Alley, the place today. If you want to come out, we're brought to you by Bud Light. They're giving away some Bud Light koozies and stuff too. So come on by, say hi. We're going to talk with Rob Reichel. Coming up today, we're going to talk with Rob. Mike Clemens is going to join us in the final hour of the program as well. Uh, so I'm going to get into the talk with Mike a little bit as Mike and I are uh, getting set, along with the staff getting set to head off to Super Bowl 57. Um, the, 
Ben, now you asked me the question. You said one of the things you, we could discuss today is the Packers. Are they better set up to replicate what the Chiefs are doing? A uh, quarterback on a big deal playing uh, on, a, on a high level or better set up to replicate what the Eagles did to move off of their quarterback and move uh, on to a younger guy. I think the difference is, is that while the Packers do have a good quarterback, they don't have a good young quarterback. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is still young. He's still under the age of 30. So when you have a quarterback that's this good, that's had this much success, that's already won a Super Bowl in his second, uh, you kind of look at it and go, you know, uh, they're probably you, you talk about striking it rich. Boy, how, if you're the Bears, how are you not putting palm to forehead every time Patrick Mahomes takes the field, you know? Because the Bears had a shot at him. Whew. How the Bears uh, even wake up in the morning and go, Phew, without jumping out of a window somewhere, is amazing to me. But the difference is, is that Rodgers is coming up at the end of his career. Patrick Mahomes, he's in the midst of it. Uh, so I think that's a little bit different. But if you were the GM here, Ben, are you then saying, move on? Time Logic will tell you, move on, go to love, start to take that money, invest it back into the team. You're going to get love if you sign him. You're going to because love does not have uh, the cred behind him to say that he's worthy of some kind of a you know forty million dollar a year deal. Can you get Jordan Love for fifteen, seventeen, eighteen million bucks a year, something like that, for say three or four years, and then have that money, have that cap relief, have that ability to go out and spend that money and put young. First of all, draft younger, and then secondly, go out and buy the free agents to put around him. If indeed he's worth anything to then be successful? I think so. I think in that scenario with, I mean, a good amount of this team back, it's not as if he'd be playing with a shell of a roster. I, As I've said, I think you'll learn whether he's good, whether he's the guy. I think you'll learn whether Matt LaFleur is the long-term guy. I think the worst case scenario is there. He's not good. The team's bad. Then you have a high draft pick. And then you go into a quarterback heavy draft with a chance to get a guy so i look at that i i mean i said this this morning i think the packers are set up well because both of the scenarios they could choose aren't necessarily negative it's either rogers comes back and you try to win it with him or you go forward and you already have that quarterback on your roster which who end up uh, he could be the guy so when i look at the two though when i look at okay the eagles and what they're doing or the chiefs and what they're doing I would think the Eagles would have a better model that the Packers could replicate if we're comparing the two to get back to the Super Bowl. I I would agree. And like I said, logic will tell you now's the time to do it. And this one's from Mark who said, with the Raiders trading the seventh pick in this year's draft plus the 2024 first rounder to get Aaron Rodgers out to, to Las Vegas, would you do that? Um. I, logic would tell you yes, absolutely. So you'd have the, the you're telling me you would have the the seventh and the fifteenth overall pick in this year's draft, plus another first round in 2024 if indeed Rodgers plays another season. I, unless that's not uh, not a contingent uh, a conditional draft choice, would you do that? You talk about being able to restock in a hurry. You know, I mean, you could still get yourself a quarterback at seven to sit behind Jordan Love, and then you can kind of bring in two guys to decide what it is you want to do if you want to do that. Uh, or you can find yourself uh, a top-quality um, wide receiver or two. Uh, you could find your new safety. You could find a tight end uh, at that particular level of the draft. I mean, there's so many different ways you could go for holes that you need to fill with whatever quality falls in your lap. But, I, yeah, uh, you know, if, if, if that's what they would want to do, then, yeah, I probably have to consider that seriously if indeed that's something. And again, because you got to look at it as, you know, what does Rodgers want? And, and as Ian Rappaport said yesterday, you probably look at this and say, you know, what Rodgers kind of wants to do is probably going to be what the Green Bay Packers do. You know, it's not necessarily up to just them saying, now nah, we're getting ready to talk to you later, because he could always just say, you know what? Screw you, I'm going to bail. I want to end my career in Green Bay. I'm not going to go play somewhere else. And he could just bail and say, I'm going to retire. And then that will ultimately kickstart everything. Don't get me wrong. But you're also sitting there for the next couple of years with that money. So I think it has to be kind of a, a mutual agreement that this is what's going to happen. But would I do that? Um, my head says absolutely move on it in a heartbeat. 
my heart says, boy, it, it means you eliminate them being able to run it back one more time to see if indeed, to see if they can have a run. You know, Ben, would you do that? Bring him back one more time? No, no, no. Would you, if the Raiders came to the Packers and you were the general manager of the Packers and said, hey, we're going to have the number one, our number one this year, we want to go ahead and give you the number seven overall pick in the draft, so you'd have seven and 15, and then give you their number one pick next year in 2024, would you do that? Oh, God, in a second. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, because here's the thing. Number one, you would, as I've said, learn about love, but then look at all the ammunition you could have if love's not the guy. Right. Like that's number seven. You could trade down with that seven and get future picks. That's exactly what the Eagles have done Mm -hmm. is their GM. Howie Roseman has traded in drafts, traded back, moved picks in later years. He set it up. So there's always the backup plan where we could have two first round picks next year to go get another guy. So I do that in a second. Yeah. I, I would uh, seriously have to think about it, like hard, big time. 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. If you want to find us, please feel free. Again, 877-867-1670. Yeah, I would have to think really, really, really hard about that uh, if that would be – because and, and again, because everybody knows my feeling. I think Rodgers is going to come back and play well this year. I, I just do, and it's not based upon Aaron Rodgers that I see him slipping and he's not a quality quarterback or he doesn't have it anymore and he can't throw the ball anymore, can't read defenses anymore, he's gotten slow. I think this year he's coming back and he's going to play well. So I, I, I'm not I'm not denying that. Um, but, yeah, I'm, that would make me go, oof, I'm probably going to have to do it. Hey, did you see the uh, the Chiefs practice yesterday by any chance? I did, yep. Why are they practicing outside? They're on the cold. I don't know. I couldn't figure that out. They're, they're practicing in the cold. I mean, I know Patrick Mahomes, full participant in practice and all that kind of stuff. Um, I couldn't figure out why are they practicing in the cold? The goofiest thing. Because you're going to be playing in, first of all, warm climate, and you're playing indoors. <laughs> but they put them outside in the cold. I, you know, hey, Andy Reid's had success, so who am I to judge? But I just thought it was kind of weird that uh, – that uh, for whatever reason, they had him outside. Anyway, uh, I digress. 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. Scott over in the Bud Light live stream says, scariest thing in Green Bay is a new team president in a couple of years, guts everything, starts a total rebuild, fires a GM, fires a coach, dumps everybody because a new team president wants their own people. There's no way. Uh, Scott, I understand what you're saying, but there is no way. No way that... Mark Murphy is going to hire somebody that's going to come in and just gut it. Um, I'm here to tell you, there is absolutely positively no way they're going to do that. Much like when Bob Harlan gave it uh, to to Mark Murphy. Um, he came in and said, hey, one thing you don't want to do is meddle. Just go in, do your thing, and get the hell out of the way. That's it. Don't Don't go in and start tinkering and screwing things up or nothing like that. Just, you know, stop it. Just go in and, and kind of be the man behind the scenes, build the program, the whole deal, and go from there. That's it. And go from there. 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. If you want to find us, uh, that's a great way to do so. Phone number right there. Uh, 877-867-1670. Um, this, one's from, this one's from Anthony who says, uh, hey, guys, uh, if you bring Rodgers back, would you tra- then trade him after this year? It, well, yeah, if he wants to come back, if he wants to come back and play again. But every year that you see, here, here's the thought, is if you trade him now, whatever team that gets him looks at him and says, hey, we've at least got a shot with this contract being what it is that we got him the next couple of years that it's not a one-hit wonder. We're hoping he does decide to play until he's 42, say. He, he's already stated he doesn't want to go to 45 like Tom Brady, but he's already said that, that that's what he would like to do. So, yeah, you, 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 you'd like to do that. You'd like to be able to trade. If you're going to trade him, you'd like to trade him now. Next year, especially, let's just say, God forbid, he, has, uh, he goes against what, what I think, and he has somewhat of a down year. Then you're going to be looking at that going, okay, um, yeah, he, 
he uh, he's fallen off. If he has a down year, he's fallen off, and suddenly the value goes way down. But no, you, if you're it, the reason he would be more valuable now is because he's sitting at forty with probably a couple more years left in him. So whatever team does get him, they're probably looking at that, going, you know, it's not going to be a one hit wonder. We're going to do everything we can to keep this guy here, and we believe we can. So whether it's the Jets or whether it's the Raiders or wherever else they decide, to, if they decide to ship him to, it's more valuable now to trade him than it is going to be to next year to trade him. So to answer your question, that's why if you hang on to him this year, then most likely you're going to have him until he does decide to retire a Green Bay Packer. Just, just my thought. Um, this one's from Anthony. Uh, no, I already read that one. I'm sorry. This is from a uh, uh, player, player Dave. Player Dave says, uh, I would like to see Aaron Rodgers come back one more time to get a shot at the Super Bowl. So what if he doesn't win it? Let's say he takes us to an NFC championship game and plays incredibly well, and it's only one fluke play or two fluke plays that cost the Green Bay Packers. So what? It still means that he went out on one of the highest notes as a quarterback in Green Bay, as opposed to just winning the championship and having to win the championship, he, should, he says, uh, to raise the trophy high and then to say he's going to retire. At least then he still went out on top, and the team has something to live up to. Right now, they're not even in the postseason, and it was kind of an ugly season, and I'm not sure he wants to go out that way as the Packers quarterback. I That I agree with. He has stated time and again that, you know, he obviously would love to go out with a championship, and he'd probably call it quits if he did win one. But he also wants to be and is desired to be uh, the more decorated quarterback in Green Bay Packer history in the Super Bowl era, the modern era. I know people get into the... The, uh, the, you know, the, the Bart Starr won more championships. And nobody's ever going to top that. But we're talking Super Bowl era, too. We're talking in, in modern history here um, without going back to the championships that were won prior to the Super Bowl. 877-867-1670. Let's go to our buddy Tim in Sparta. Tim, how are you doing today, man? What's going on? How are you? I'm doing good, Tim. What's on your mind, man? Well, I got two things. One, if I get that deal that you were talking about, you know I love Rodgers. You know I think that he's the greatest thrower of the football I've ever seen. Um, and But I would take that deal. I would take that deal in a heartbeat. Um, and I think if he could go to, to uh, uh, Vegas and be reunited with uh, his uh, pass catching buddy, he, he would do it as well. Um, because it's going to give you so much leverage in the years to come. It just, it would, it, it would be too good to pass up. Um, and the, the second thing that I've got is, and this is a question for Ben Kenny. I need to find out just exactly, oh, no. <laughs> just exactly what kind of a Philly fan he is. I mean, I want to root for Philadelphia, but I need to know, has he ever shown up at a baseball game? or a football game with uh, four double D batteries in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to say, Tim. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to refer to my, uh, my counsel, my legal counsel before I proceed. <laughs> right. <laughs> hopefully that, uh, so Tim, now hopefully that, uh, are. I was going to say, Tim, hopefully that, uh, that, that, uh, you know, you know, curbs your in enthusiasm and interest. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to read for this for filling off your butt. Um, my heart has got to go with Kansas City because there was an old Iowa running back called Eddie Podolak um, who went to them uh, back in the day. So they've always kind of been my second team. But thanks for uh, neither confirming nor denying. <laughs> All right, buddy. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Bill, I told you I'm creating Chiefs fans by the day. I was going to say, I, you know, I, I, that's a, that's a hell of a, uh, hell of a, hell of a question there. There you have it. Uh, 877-867-1670. Hit us up. We got a lot more of the Bill Michael show coming up right after this. This is the Bill Michael show on the Wisconsin sports zone radio network. 
everywhere you look, from groceries to utilities to gas, prices keep going up. Hello Windows and Doors of Wisconsin can dramatically help lower your energy costs year-round by replacing drafty windows and doors in as little as six weeks. And now you can save even more by taking advantage of 0% interest for up to 48 months when you lock in your prices by February 28th. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Bring the love of Wisconsin's outdoors in through the beauty and quality craftsmanship of Pella Windows and Doors. Whether you're updating or upgrading the look and comfort of your home, Pella has extensive lines of customizable options to meet your needs and your budget, no matter the season. Replacing drafty windows and doors can dramatically lower your energy costs. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin offers some of the most energy efficient windows in the industry. Designed to keep the cold outside where it belongs. Lock in your prices by February 28th and get 0% interest for up to 48 months. Visit PellaWI.com. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes. Michaels will resume in two minutes. Michaels will resume in one minute. Michael will resume in 30 seconds. And uh, we are brought to you by our friends at Quick Trip. Stopped there earlier this morning, filled up and uh, getting ready for the trip. And I uh, picked up a few things while I was there that I'm going to need when I, uh, when I we start to wing our way out to Arizona. So good stuff. Thanks to our friends at Quick Trip. They have right now 79 cent bread. Uh, Kristen came home last night and she uh, and was like, oh, my God, where did you stop? And I could just smell fried chicken. And she said, oh, I got a couple of dinners. 
And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, where did she go? You know, restaurants or something? And it would no, she stopped at Quick Trip, picked up a couple of the mashed potatoes, picked up a couple of the uh, chicken tender boxes. And, oh, it's just so good. Quick Trip is fantastic. And we love them to death. And thanks to uh, Quick Trip for being a part of the program because uh, they've been with us a long, long time. And don't forget, when you're there, use your Quick Rewards card. And you can start earning yourself not only some, you know, some discounts, but you can also earn yourself uh, some additional points down the road that can help you out at the pump as well. That's our friends over there at Quick Trip. Um, the uh, This one's from Aaron who says, hey, Bill, going into the draft, what is the biggest need you feel the Packers have? And uh, on another note, he says, how do you feel about the Brewers season? Uh, I'll, I'll deal with the Packers first. Uh, in my opinion, um, the Packers need some help at tight end. You're probably going to need another um, another wide out. You're going to need defensive front help, depth on the offensive line, probably a safety. Uh, all of those, whatever best available that fills the bill, you can go after. I mean, you can always go after additional parts that you already have um, fortified because you can never have I – mean, look at the year that they thought, oh, my God, we got so many wide receivers. We, we're, we've got an embarrassment of riches. And then the next season, uh, you know, all of a sudden you saw numerous guys go down, including Jordy Nelson, and suddenly you're hurting. You don't have you, – you got like two receivers after your starting four went down. And, you, you, you know, you can never have too many, you know. So whatever the best available is, go after. But as far as needs go, I would say one of your top priorities is probably fortifying your tight end, getting another good wide out, another good weapon or two for that matter. But to me, you got to get more defensive front, more defensive. Because when you saw the Packers get beat this year, you saw them get beat by the Jets in the trenches, by the Giants in the trenches. You know, you start to look at these teams. They, they you know, tough game against Tennessee, a tough game. Uh, you know, they beat the Cowboys, but a tough game protecting Aaron Rodgers on the consistent. Once that line started to come back together, it got better. But, you know, go back to the beginning of the season when they were shuffling guys around on the offensive front. They got beat in the trenches. They started putting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. They weren't able to pass the ball over the middle. was terrible. They couldn't get pressure on Kirk Cousins quick enough. So, to me, it's all about the trenches. Um, so, and that's where you win games. You know, obviously, safety and corner are going to be two areas that you want to look at. Safety, if you don't bring back Adrian Amos, you're going to have to uh, find another safety. But you can never have too many good quality corners. Because you're hoping Stokes comes back and, and plays well and doesn't have that sophomore slump kind of hangover. So you want, obviously, a good Jair, a good Stokes, and then Rasul Douglas is going to be your nickel guy or Savage becomes your slot guy, whatever, and move guys around. But you could use secondary help as well. So I don't think there's any area that you could ignore. But I think... Um, but I think, you know, you always win in the trenches. It's, it's like throwing a stone in a pond, man. Everything begins in the trenches and it trickles out. And to me, you can't have enough good defensive defensive front guys. You can't have enough of them. 877-867-1670. Let's go to Mike listening to us in Rockford. Mike, how are you doing today, man? What's going on? Hey, Bill. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, you know, Bill, I, I, I think I would speak for everybody in Packerland when I say this. Um, it, I'm, I'm just sick and tired of Rodgers. Um, and I know that people have to do the reporting on him and they give him the attention and he's on his pat, back of the show or whatever. The, you know, he's got all his his stuff, his rumblings going on. And I, I just can't stand how he plays a mind game. Let, let me ask you a question, Bill. You're an old school guy. You've been around a while. You know, go back 30 years ago in the NFL when, when a player signed a big contract, there was never any question of whether he was wanting to get traded or he was going to be gone or he's going to walk away, he's going to retire. You don't, you didn't see what you're seeing now with him. And he's just, he's got an arrogance about him. As much as I, I love his on the field, you know, attributes, his off the field is, is the opposite, in my opinion. He just, He's the reason why this team is not gelling. I mean, he plays mind games with the media. He's doing the same thing with the with his teammates. Uh, he doesn't go to the OTAs to play with the rookies, you know, like Brady did. He didn't make a connection. He's he's all about his traveling and what he wants to do. And then then he just plays this game like you know, well, if I want to come back, 
well, you signed a huge deal, buddy. I mean, what are you going to do? I, why is this? If it was anybody else, this wouldn't even be a question, Bill. Right. Um, I'll hang up and listen, but I'm just disgusted by the whole doggone thing. To be quite honest with you, if he goes, I don't care if he stays or he goes. And if he goes, good riddance and, and bring on the Jordan. I'm not saying that I think it's going to be better if he leaves, but I think he's only got one more year left in the tank anyway. But I just can't stand how he plays mind games. And he's, he knows doggone well what he's doing. Right. Thanks. No, I, I understand that. And that's what we call when you when you get into that discussion, that it's the, the Aaron Rodgers fatigue. It's, it's, it's that, and, uh, and I completely, I, I completely get it. It's, you know, people are tired of the, will I, or won't I, or, you know, like the comments that he made the other day when he said, you know, ah, the Packers are having, it seems like they're having conversations uh, and not including me. Interesting. You know, like, um, like nobody's allowed to talk, you know, and I understand that he has this new relationship and this new understanding and this new, new, uh, you know, I don't want to say an agreement, but new you know, relationship, if you will, that's been built between him and Brian Gudikins. But again, I go back to, it depends what the conversations were. If they called and Gudikins picked up the phone and said, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Then, okay, no problem. But if, 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 if Gudikins called somebody else to make a deal, well, then that becomes a little bit different. So, and I get it. Um, 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. Let's do this. We're going to step out and take a quick break. I, I know we got Derek uh, in Albany on hold. If you can hang on, hang on. If not, we'll get back to you. Got Rob Rice. We're going to talk to him a lot about this. And I think I know where Rob's going to go uh, because Rob has been outspoken on this. We're going to talk with Rob about this. But we're going to kind of talk about a lot of different things when it comes to the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, and company. This portion of the program Brought to you by our friends over there in New Mail Medical, treating guys with ED all over the state of Wisconsin, well beyond the borders as well. New Mail Medical has been getting it done for a long time. They've got a 98% success rate. So if you, um, you know, have ED, you know what it is, and uh, so does your partner, go ahead and give them a shout. They can all but guarantee they can help you. How about, uh, say, low T? You may not even know you have it. If you're over the age of 30, you're feeling sluggish, moody, tired, run down, whatever, go in, get checked out. Takes you maybe about 10, 15 minutes tops. Or... Now you're looking at uh, turning the corner. We're in February now. Turning the corner towards warmer weather and T-shirt season. You're going, holy mackerel. Come on, man. I got to start shedding some poundage. Uh, great way to do it. Great people at the New Mel Medical Center. Call them 414 anywhere, by the way. 414-455-4451. 414-455-4451. That's the New Mel Medical Center. They have numerous locations, not just in Wisconsin, but all over the country. You can call them at that number. 414-455-4451. 4451. Rob Reichel going to join us coming up next to the Bill Michael Show. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Bill Michael will resume in five minutes.
Bill Michaels will resume in two minutes. Michael's will resume in one minute. seconds. Rob, how are you doing today, man? What's going on? Billy, I wish I knew you were so close to my house. I would I would have stopped by. We could have done this in person. Oh, I didn't even know you were out this way. I, For whatever reason, I thought you were north. Not yeah, in Green no, Bay, but I, I thought you were north of Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm 10, 15 minutes from you. Whatever. We'll, we'll make it work the next time, my friend. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do that for sure. So uh, with everything that's gone on over the last couple of weeks, Rob, you and I have not had a chance to catch up. Give me your thoughts on what's going on with uh, the Packers, the quarterback, the rumors, and everything that's happening right now. God, Billy, I'd just like to take about a month-long nap and then wake up and call you and ask you what the hell happened. Um, <laughs> it's It's exhausting. It's it, it's annual. It's uh, it, it's infuriating for the fan base. Um, you know, and, and Bill, I had someone in the league the other day tell me that that Aaron loves this. Um, you know, it's they they, they should be talking. You know, we all should be talking, right? Eagles, Chiefs, so we're blue in the face. Last week we should have been talking about the conference championship games until we're blue in the face. And 
you know, and, and what, what's the lead topic on more, most sports shows on an annual, on a, on a given day, not just you locally, but, but nationally, right. It, it, it's number 12 and, and a guy who's as egomaniacal as Rogers um, just, just gobbles this stuff up. And, you know, a guy I was talking to in the league said, you know, there, there's no pressure on him. He's out of the playoffs like usual at this time of the year. So, um, and, um, you know, he, he gets to sit back and watch himself lead sports center on, on a given night. Um, you know, Billy, I, I, I think everybody in the organization knows what, what the next step is going to be. I think the Packers kind of know what they want to do. I think Rodgers probably knows what what's going to happen and what it is he wants to do. He's obviously going to continue to play because he's not going to try to go into the Hall of Fame or go into the Hall of Fame the same year that Tom Brady does. And he's not going to take, you know, even J.J. Watt, he's not going to take a backseat to those guys. His ego won't let him do it. So, I mean, he's going to play, Bill. And obviously we're at a point now the only question is where and you know and I, and I do think the Packers know um my guess is that deep down they they probably do want to move on from him but Aaron does have a lot of power in this deal too Billy uh it's just the way the contract was structured that you know if he doesn't want to go quietly he certainly doesn't have to and they're going to have to come to to some resolution but um you know I, I again it's just kind of the same old same old from from the last two three years Bill uh, with, with, with Rogers in, in this type of deal. And, and again, I, th- I think for everybody in, in Packer nation, it's, you know, it, it, it's a story we're all kind of tired of. I look at this Rob and I think, and I've said this before that logic would tell you Packers make a move. They trade for a couple of first rounders, maybe one this year, maybe one next year, what have you. And then uh, they begin the Jordan love era. Uh, my heart tells me, that Aaron, I think, uh, on his end anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, probably wants to stay with the Packers, probably because he doesn't want to go in early, doesn't want to learn a new system, doesn't want to you know, have to you know, meet new guys and get guys on his level and all that kind of stuff. It's easier to go to, your, to where you know, you know, says, hey, I want to come back. I want to run it back one more time. Give me a shot. And I'll give you some money back. We'll we'll adjust this thing so it makes it cap friendly for everybody. And I think ultimately that's what the Packers do. So my head tells me make the deal, but my heart tells me I don't think that's going to happen. Is that is that is that a fair way to look at this? I, I think it's an extremely fair way to look at it, Bill. And you know, I, I'm kind of in the mindset that until proven otherwise, I, I expect them under center. Um, you know, when whenever they kick it off, September 10th or whatever it turns out to be. Uh, you know, here in, in five, six months, I, you know, I, I think Rogers is, is still green Bay's guy. And kind of like the last couple of years, there's, there's a lot of, ch- you know, chatter through the off season and, and he ends up being, uh, you know, green Bay starter when, when we roll around now, again, I, I think that would be a colossal mistake from a Packer standpoint. And I, and I'm with you, Bill, it's, 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 you know, the, the devil that, you know, from Rogers standpoint is, is, you know, is always safer than the devil that you don't and, and, and whatever he, he, he has. He has power and control inside the Packer organization, Billy, that I don't think he'd get in other places, and that is certainly unique and rare to what we've seen in that sport here over the last, you know, couple of couple of generations. You know, for Rogers to have a, you know, a seat at the big boy table at Thanksgiving, it, it doesn't happen for 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 many athletes, Billy. They're usually at the kids' table, right? Mm-hmm. So, but again, it, you know, if you are the Packers and you've got to make a call here really soon on on Jordan Love. It, it, it's time to find out what, what you have there. And, I, and I'm and i sure Gutekunst wants to find out as, as soon as possible what he has there. I, I think internally, Bill, they believe that, you know, they, they, they could win as many games next year with Jordan Love potentially as, as they would with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the, the, the limited amount that we saw Jordan Love this season was extremely encouraging. Um, you know, the way he finished that Philadelphia game, um, he, had, he had a couple other spots, you know, uh, spot duties along the way. I think his passer rating wound up about 112, Bill. Um, you know, and, and I know that, that that's certainly not a full body of work, a 17-game season. But what I think he flashed this year, Billy, and, and what you saw from him was very, you know, very reminiscent of Rodgers back in 07, 15 years earlier. You know, when he came in for Favre in, the, in that Dallas game on the Thursday night, and, and he almost rallied the Packers to a win that night when – you know, that, that was a couple of 10-1 and one teams going at it, and Favre got hurt and Rodgers came in. There was a real belief after that inside the organization, Bill, that, uh, you know, that, that Rodgers could exceed Favre pretty quickly in terms of the level that he was playing at, and, and obviously he did when he won the Super Bowl in 2010. I, 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 I don't know if it's quite as strong 
with Jordan Love, Bill, but you know that that he would exceed what Rodgers is doing on the field within a year or two or something like that. But I think they believe he can certainly be a winning quarterback in the league. And on top of it, if you make that move sooner than later, Bill, you still get the draft capital for Rodgers before it's too late because the longest, the longer they screw around with Rodgers and making a trade, his value goes down year to year. And secondly, Bill, at some point in time here, they, they've got to pay that visa bill and start to get their salary cap in line. So by 2024, 2025, 2026, whenever you want to circle, they can be relevant again in, in free agency instead of just kicking all these contracts down the road. And they can actually go out and start chasing some people and build a winning roster around Jordan Love. The longer they procrastinate with Rogers, Bill, that becomes an impossibility. Um, now, I know Jordan Love had, what, I think nine or ten passes or something like that over at uh... – over in Philly, looked really good. He himself even said it was against a, a defense that was playing a defense that was playing relatively soft. But it got a lot of people enthused. He looked better. He looked more sharp. But then the question becomes: Okay, so suppose you do, you know, kind of run it back and you have him sit for a year. What do you end up doing with him? Because you got to look at Jordan Love and say, okay, we got to pay the guy because you're going to pick up that extension. So what is that going to be? Is that going to be ten million, fifteen million? I mean, do you bank twenty million dollars on a guy that really hasn't shown whether or not he can even win in the league yet? Yeah, you know, that, that that number, Bill, is kind of determined by, you know, there, there's a formula that the league uses for that based on, you know, uh, quarterbacks at the various points in their career and the averages of salaries and things like that. But but the projected number there on Love is going to be in the $20 million range right. uh, when, 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 when it's all said and done. So now all of a sudden your salary cap becomes even, you know, more out of whack. And you might have to make a decision then, Bill, if, you know, if you do sign it because, you know, Love's been a Love's been a good soldier through this, but at some point in time, you know, his people and and Jordan himself are going to ask out of Green Bay. They're going to say, I, you know, I'm not I'm not sitting here forever behind Aaron Rodgers. You you know these guys, Bill. They're yeah. alpha dogs. They're alpha male. They you know that they don't come into the NFL to sit and watch somebody else play for the first four years of their career, and that's what you'd be asking Jordan Love to do. So if you do stay married to Aaron Rodgers. I still think, Bill, chances are they might have to move on from Jordan Love. And, and then the worst case scenario, obviously, is you move him somewhere and he, and, and he lights it up and he turns himself into a Pro Bowl player at some point in time. And within a year or two, you know, Aaron's out of the league and, you know, he, he takes the you know, dramatic fall like Favre did between nine and ten when he when he was with Minnesota. Because at some point in time, you know, much like Brady this year, Bill, you know, these guys do take these dramatic falls. And I, I think you saw the beginning of the end with Aaron Rodgers this year, um, you know, in, in Green Bay. So that that's a worst case scenario, Bill. And it's not one I would want to paint myself into if I'm the Packers to, to opt to stay married to Aaron Rodgers and then potentially have to move on from Jordan Love. I think that's a lose-lose. And now you're chasing and looking for your next quarterback. Uh, you know, when Rodgers is gone again, I mean, if you move on from Jordan Love, Bill, you almost have to take a quarterback again in this in this draft relatively high to find the next guy again to sit and wait behind Aaron Rodgers. And and who knows how that's going to work out. So you're really setting the franchise back, Bill. I, I, I think the longer you stay married to Aaron Rodgers, you might have a year or two in here, Billy, that, that's kind of a hiccup, you know, where they keep going 500 or even a 7 and 10 or a 6 and 11. But, but again, I, I, I think when love continues to grow, especially with these young receivers and they get their salary cap situation figured out, I think they're right back in the hunt in the NFC within a couple of years. Uh, real quick before I let you go. So going into this, if they do run it back, Roger said he would like to have Mercedes, like to have Bakhtiari, like to have, you know, Kabi, you know, he goes through the laundry list. Uh, I mean, obviously you gain some salary cap if you get rid of Bakhtiari, but, uh, you know, as Brian Gutekind alluded to, you, you know, good left tackles are hard to find. And when he did play, he played well. Is there anybody that you would say, I'm not bringing them back? Would it be Cobb? Would it be Big Dog? Would it be Bakhtiari? Would, is there anybody you would say, sorry, but we got to move on. It's time to time to make hay. Well, Billy, as you and I are talking right now, I mean, there's $17.5 million over the salary cap uh -huh. you know, for next season. And, and that's without even touching any of their own unrestricted free agents, right? The, the Cobbs, the, the, the Lewises, the, the Alan Lazards that he's mentioned, the Bobby Tunyans people like that. I mean, Bill, it's, it's going to be really difficult to bring back any of their own free agents, much less sign anybody else's free agents. I, I think you're going to have to, they're going to have to have, you know, in addition to contract restruct, restructuring bill, where they keep kicking these things down the, down the road, 
they're going to have to do a Zadarius Smith type of move, maybe a couple of them like they did did last year, and move on from from a really high level quality starter that that's making too much money. You know, Bakhtiari's on the books for twenty nine, Bill, but there is a twenty three million dollar cap hit. You know, dead cap hit there the way his contract was structured. So you really only save six million dollars with him. You know, Kenny Clark's on the books for twenty four, and I don't think Kenny's getting dumped by any means but i'm just giving you a couple of numbers right. you know kenny kenny's dead cap hits 20 you know so you'd only save four there the, the big ones they could save on are obviously aaron jones who, do, who does have a 10 million dollar cap uh dead cap hit bill but his his cap itself is 20 so you save 10 million on on aaron jones you could move on you know from guys like preston smith and devondre campbell and and people like that but bill you know that that that's the whole thing with bringing aaron back how are you ever going to get back to the number? And they will because they're creative and everybody finds a way around the salary cap. But how are you going to get your numbers in line, Bill, and improve your football team to a point where you can make a run again in the NFC? I, I just don't think it's feasible, Bill. Um, you know, the, their window was 2020 and 2021. That's when they went for it. They kept bringing these guys back, gave them big money, postponed some of the payments on these deals. It bottomed out for them a little bit, or they, you know, they were a 500 team for all practical purposes in 2022. And now the bill has come due on a lot of this stuff. And, you know, they went for it in 2020 and 2021. It didn't work out. So not, you know, and, and kudos to them, Bill, for going for it. You know, it just, it just didn't, it didn't pan out with those, you know, losses to San Francisco in the playoffs in, in 21 and the Tampa in the NFC title game in 2020. And, and, and now you move on. And I, I think you just turn the page and start that next chapter and, and, and try to get things back in line financially and, and see what you have in, in Jordan Love. And, and, and again, Billy, here's the big thing to me. They are in a, they are in a position of total strength right now with Aaron Rodgers. You've, you've got so many desperate you know teams in the league desperate for quarterback help that, that I, I think this still, still is an offseason where you can get you know pretty high return for a guy like Aaron Rodgers. There's no guarantee of that a year from now, two years from now. You know, you, you're probably talking half the price that you get today. So I sell high, Bill, because you've got all these quarterback-starved teams out there, especially with Tom Brady off the market now. And, and I turn the page and I start that next chapter of Packer football. Good stuff as always, Rob. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll chat again real soon, okay? Especially when stuff star, uh, starts to matriculate, I would assume, over the next two, three weeks as we start to hear more from Rodgers, okay? All right, Bill. Always fun. Thanks a lot. All right, buddy. Lot. Talk to you soon. There you go. That's uh, our good buddy, Rob Reichel. And uh, logically, 100% dead on. Logically, 100% dead on. Can't, can't argue with it. Uh, but I, th- there's that heart and head thing that go along almost hand in hand with all that stuff. So I, I get it. Get everything he's saying. Hey, don't forget about our friends at Great Lakes Dragway. Go to greatlakesdragway.com, greatlakesdragway.com down in Union Groves. If you got the need for speed, whether it's uh, running your own, we're checking it out. The 2023 season passes are on sale. That is our friends from GreatLakesDragaway.com. We got a lot more of the Bill Michaels show on a Fish Fry Friday where it's Stoley's Hog Alley, where it's been renovated, it's reopened, and we are so glad to be here today. Thanks to Jeff and Alicia Stoll for having us out here. Love them both, and uh, just a tremendous, so come on out, tremendous day. Come on out, whether it's clam chowder or bluegill or perch or cod or shrimp dinners. Friday Fish Fry, come out and have it with us. We got more after this. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is The Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes.
Bill Michaels will resume in one minute. Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. Mike Clemens. The Eagles and the Chiefs will hold workouts today and install more of the game plan before flying to Phoenix this Sunday to prepare for Super Bowl 57. Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni on what he sees on tape from Kansas City. As far as the Chiefs, you know, obviously they've been really good for a long time. Great organization. Coach Reed's a great coach. And Patrick Mahomes, one of the best players in the world. Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, they got, they got good players everywhere and really good coaching. We're in our early stages of studying the Chiefs, and that's where we are right now. This is the third Super Bowl in four years for the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes on how he's grown into the role of the Chiefs' starting quarterback. Uh, when you've been in some big games now a, a couple years in a row, you've learned from your mistakes, and I felt like the year before I let one state kind of compound into to two, three, or whatever it was, whereas this game, this, this last one, instead of, Worrying about, man, I made a huge mistake, and we probably could have had a good chance of not putting the game away, but giving ourselves a, a big lead. Let's not magnify it. Let's just, just move on to the next play, continue what you were doing throughout the entire game. And um, we didn't necessarily have a lot of, a ton of yards after that, but I didn't make another mistake. And then whenever the time came, I was able to make a play in order to, to get us in the field range. And Donald Driver was asked, what did he know? It was time to retire from the Packers. I had my conversation at the end of the year, and they said, hey, Donald, listen, we want to go in a different route. You're, you're 38, you're still playing at a high level. What's your plan? And I said, well, I have to look at the room. And, and I love my receivers at the time. And I walked up and I told J.J. and Jordy and Cobb and Greg was leaving already. And I said, fellas, I'm going to retire. Um, I'm going to let you guys have the show. I'm going to walk away. And they did. They asked me to play other places. Um, Greg called me when he signed with Minnesota. Come play with me. And, and I told him, I said, I promise the fans that I would never wear another color. We'll have updates every day next week from Super Bowl 57 in Phoenix. I'm Mike Clemens on The Bill Michaels Show. Here in Lake Country, and uh, good to have you on board. Speaking of Lake Country... Another terrific place not far from here, which is our friend at Boondocks Barbecue Burgers and Brews. And uh, if you're in the Lake Country area, maybe you stop at a Stoli's or maybe you want to get a uh, fish fry over at uh, Boondocks. Boondocks always has uh, some fantastic stuff uh, over there, as a matter of fact. Right there on County Road K in Oconomowoc, they have, uh, they you know, if you follow them on Facebook, they're always posting pictures of the food, specialty drinks. It's the season of love. So they have got specialty drinks, strawberry wink, Frostbite, Mimosa, they've got the flirt, as they call it. Great drinks, great people, great staff. And that is our friend at Boondocks Barbecue Burgers and Brews. Reminder, next week we're going to be on Radio Row. We're going to be live from Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, starting tomorrow, uh, we're going to be out there uh, later tomorrow. So start looking for our, uh, our social media. So make sure you follow us on Facebook. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, uh, The Bill Michael Show on Instagram. We changed the name because it was too many different names. So it's The Bill Michael Show on Facebook, The Bill Michael Show on Instagram, just simply Bill underscore Michaels on Twitter. Plenty of places to follow us, but we're going to be bringing you uh, some uh, Facebook Lives, YouTube Lives. We're going to be uh, doing uh, different pictures and such from out there. I've already got people sending me stuff as the ESPN set is being all set up right across next to uh, my, my buddy's shop out in uh, Old Scottsdale. So we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun as we get ready to head out to Arizona. So hopefully uh, you're enjoying the day. I'm uh, going to go ahead and take a quick break. We're going to come back. we got a lot more to get to. Two hours down, like I said, two hours yet to go. We are live. We're in Lake Country in Oconomowoc, Stoli's Hog Alley. 
newly renovated, smells great, food is great, Fish Fry Friday, whether it's perch or walleye or garlic lime shrimp skewers or the sandwich or I'm making myself hungry. Oh, oh, so much more to go. Stay tuned. More coming up right after this. is a Wisconsin Sports Zone update. Well, Yamasaki Takupa went off last night, scoring 54 points, grabbing 18 rebounds in a 106-105 win over the Clippers. The Bucks trailed by as many as 21 points before they were back in the third and fourth quarters to capture a sixth straight win for Giannis. His third 50-point game of the year, his second in the last week. They're going to host Miami tomorrow. Meanwhile, Giannis can have some familiar company at the All-Star Game in Salt Lake City later this month. That's because Drew Holiday was named among the reserves from the Eastern Conference. It's the second time he's gotten chosen and the first since the 2012-2013 season. Turning to the Badgers, they escaped Columbus last night with a 65-60 win despite not hitting a shot in the final 7-18 of the game. It's been a rough stretch for Wisconsin as they had lost 6 of 7 coming into last night, but Coach Greg Gard said they just kept grinding. Really, it's, it sounds coach cliche, but you have to trust what you're doing day in and day out. The people around you, your work that you put in for the past 10, 12 months prior to the season, all those things come in, and then you got teammates around you that support you and hold you accountable, um, you know, but also pick you up and, and keep you connected together. Wisconsin will host Northwestern on Sunday. Mutual Insurance, keeping Wisconsin strong. When a company only does business in Wisconsin, that's Wisconsin Strong. Rural Mutual provides all lines of insurance, including commercial, farm, home, and auto. And your premiums stay right here to keep Wisconsin strong. Local agents, local underwriters, local claims adjusters. Rural Mutual Insurance, keeping Wisconsin strong. Well, fans going to get a chance to see the Wisconsin football program this spring. New coach Luke Fickle said last night that a practice on April 22nd will be open to the fans and will serve as their spring game. And everyone still waiting on Aaron Rodgers to announce whether he plans to continue to play or retire. With this Wisconsin Sports Zone Network update, I'm Zach Heil. Welcome in. Glad to have you. Hour number three of the Bill Michael Show. We are live. We're at Stoley's Hog Alley. We are in Lake Country. Come on by and say hi. Be glad to, uh, they're glad to feed you. It's a fish fry Friday, whether it's perch or walleye or the uh, shrimp skewers, clam chowder. They've got it all. Come on by and say hello on this afternoon or any Friday for that matter. And uh, they've been doing the, the tradition out here for Stoley's has been fantastic for God almost two decades. So uh, tremendous place. And then newly renovated, it's expanded. And like I said, I can't wait for the summer to get here for the upstairs, the outside deck to uh, to be open and it'd be sunny and warm and to be able to enjoy some stuff up there too. So uh, come on out and say, it's just a fantastic place. It's not just like a biker place or anything like that, even though it does look more biker-esque, but uh, you know, you, you got kids in here, you got families in here. It's always a fun time and it's always great. So come on by and, and say hi. So Ben Kenny producing the program, Ben, what is the Aaron Rodgers controversy you speak of? Bill, people have been reaching out to me all day today about this, actually. So oh, geez, he's go. out at he's out at Pebble Beach, right. as we know, playing some golf. Him and Ben Silverman tied for fifth after the first round. They shot 10 under, which means Rodgers had a great day because Silverman shot one over. It was okay. not a good day for the pro. It means Rodgers was somewhat dialed. Right. So there's chatter about how well he's playing. Uh, and uh, people are questioning the score. And I'll tell you why. If, if you go to Aaron Rodgers' Green Bay Country Club page, he's listed as a 3.5 handicap. Uh, and he has played down to a 2.4 at times. And then if you go to the page of the tournament, he's listed as a 10. Meaning okay. he's getting shots from somewhere. Either he's playing and, and listen, the handicap, it could be slope adjusted. But if you adjust a three and a half to what Pebble has, he would then be listed as an eight. 
or an eight five, not a ten. Okay. So there, there's some ballooning of the handicap going on that I don't know if I could stand for. Um, <laughs> just this is so wild. Uh, so I thought you were going to bring up the fact that he's actually playing pretty well. And people are going nuts saying, well, I guess his thumb's not hurt now. And I'm thinking his thumb, correct me if I'm wrong, was on the last play of the Giants game in London on October 9th. So we're talking more than three months. And normally for a, a fracture to heal is four to six weeks. We're talking now, what, 12? So not only is it, is, is it healed, but it's, two, it, it's, it's a month and a half beyond healed. So I, I'm not overly concerned about that. But you're more concerned about the fact that uh, you think he's fudging numbers to get a better handicap to therefore gain points on the course today. Now you're you're Correct. getting you're getting you're you're long, you're starting to kind of insinuate that you're lumping him in with Patrick Reed at this point. No, 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 no. There's a <laughs> there's a big difference between um between pumping a handicap up and, and listen, there could be some weird process they have that has done it. It might okay. not be him, but a big difference between that and objectively cheating and, okay. and improving your situation. But yeah, nothing to do with football here. I just, gotcha. I, I wonder how he suddenly ballooned from a three, five to a 10. Um, That's all. Maybe, maybe he was actually golfing somewhere during the thumb. And therefore, it left his handicap to begin to balloon. I mean, I'd hope not. He's in season. I would hope he's right? focusing on football at that point. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, honestly, Bill, maybe the maybe the controversy is that he's playing so well right now, right? Which means he wasn't. It, which means he was playing all season. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Maybe he. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he. Maybe that's the reason Romo seems like he's eating gummies. Because Romo's upset because Romo's always wanted to get on the PGA Tour, not able to do so. Rogers is playing extremely well. Maybe he and Rogers got together. Rogers took him for all his money. Romo is now broke and disheveled and eating gummies because of it. Yeah, all jokes aside, Tony <laughs> Romo is a plus 1.6, which is I, like bordering on. Maybe he could make it on some pro circuits. Yeah. So I think it's clear where his time is devoted to. Right. Uh, good but point. Anyway. So. You go deep, man. You you go deep. <laughs> I'm just focusing on the important things. Just, you go deep. No, I, I hey, it's important. You know, it, the one thing is he hasn't said anything on the course like, you know, love the Packers going back, you know, like sneezing or anything like that to where we can make something out that would lead us to believe he's made his decision. So, um, you know, nothing said on the Pat McAfee show today. Nobody's come on with like a hint or anything like that. Everything's been kind of quiet. But you're uh, you're worried about his golf handicap. Okay, I, I guess I can see that. Not a bad golfer, you know. You can get out and swing it with him a little bit. Ben, are you in that uh, same element? How come it is that? There, and, and I've always said this: that look, some athletes are just athletes. They just they just have it. You know, they can do certain things. I'm not there. I've always been able to. I don't necessarily go out and work on my game. I guess if I did, I, I would certainly be better at it. But I just go out and play. Some days I shoot really well i'll shoot mid 80s low 80s someday i'll go out and i'll shoot 95 you know whatever uh it's nothing overwhelmingly horrific uh but like it, it pitchers uh are usually pretty good at golf uh quarterbacks usually pretty good at golf wide receivers usually pretty good at golf um you know what is it about those athletic types that just make them better golfers which is why ben you being uh, the wannabe catcher that you are uh i don't know a whole lot of catchers that are great at golf Huh. I'm just, I could find a couple. I'm just drawing the correlations here. I think the correlation is they have money. Yeah. And time. Oh, ah, there you go. Probably time. If I had that time and money, yeah. I think I'd be good. Probably time. But yeah. I have neither. They always say once you start to really put on the bulk muscle, if you're an offensive lineman, uh, maybe in the catching area or something, that you it, it takes away from your swing. So, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Let's so, let's go to Derek listening to us in Albany. Derek, bring some sense and sensibility to the program, man. What's going on? Well, I wasn't going to talk about golf, but I'll get to the football in a moment, Bill. But uh, 
Ben, you're not old enough to have seen what Bill probably saw in the late eighties. Remember that thing, Bill with Dorf on golf. It was Tim yes. Conway. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. Ben, Ben, you got to look that up. It's called Dorf on golf. It's yeah. Hysterically funny. It yep. sounds Ooh. terrible. It, yeah. Oh it, no, no, no. It, well, it is. It's a satire. Yeah. It's very funny. And Alice Cooper about 15 years ago was about two shots away from making the pro tour. Yeah. Alice, Alice Cooper. Cooper the yeah. Rocker. Ta- tattooed mascara and all. Oh, yeah, they said he was serious. It yep. was unbelievable. Hey, a couple points here. Um, I've developed kind of a man crush on Michael Meyer, the tight end out of Notre Dame. I yep. think that guy, he, he, you know what he looks like, Bill? He Point. looks like a, a faster version of uh, Mark Bavaro. He he reminds oh. me of Mark Bavaro. Well, that's going in the and way back Max, machine there. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm 65, man. I've been watching football a hell of a long time. But, um, you know, I talked to uh, Ben off air and I, I told him that uh, I like Max Duggan as a, as a draft choice of the Packers. I said, Christ, if he's there in the third or fourth round, Ben said third or fourth round, he might be there in the sixth. Doesn't he remind you, uh, Bill, his traits kind of a, like a Favre kind of guy, you know, heart as big as a wash tub, big arm, but not that accurate. Somebody no. to develop him. <laughs> you don't think so? No, I, I think that it, that would be a good comparison. He would be more. Of yeah, because Favre wasn't going to be a guy that was going to be drafted, and who knew what Favre was going to be when they drafted him? You know, nobody expected that. So I Ron look Wolf. at uh, Ron Wolf. Knew. Ron Wolf did. So big arm, big heart, a lot of a uh, lot of lot of grit, so to speak. I can understand that, uh, but very, very, very raw. I don't know. And the other and- aspect of it is, is do you get that that uh, win at all cost mentality? Right, and the one guy I think the Packers should not let go, no matter what happens, whether Rodgers comes back or not, the one guy they can't let go of, let keep him another year, is Aaron Jones. I, no, I would agree with that. He's and he's still one of your best weapons. You know, a hey, great show, Bill. Appreciate All right, buddy. it. Talk to you. He drops off. Yeah, if you go to, to to, and I have finally started to look a little bit to the NFL draft. Not that I really want to get that heavily into it, but. You know, when you start to look at the tight end draft class, which is really good this year, and Mayer, he's the the top-rated tight end, and you talk about guys that look at him as a complete player. Um, I think he had nine touchdowns for Notre Dame this year. But the biggest thing about Mayer is, one, he can block. He's, he's not a terrible blocker, but he's got super long arms. Uh, as I started to watch a little bit of film on him, and I have not, like I said, I have not done a lot of study deep into the draft, so... I apologize if you got somebody else better and, and you want to bring it to me, bring it to me. But uh, super long arms. I don't know what his wingspan is, but that's all they talk about. The guy's got long arms, big hands, and he he just everything that gets thrown to him, he catches. But the big thing of, about him is he stretches the middle of the field. He can blow past linebackers, and he can get into the seam, specifically when you're playing zone coverage get under safeties behind linebackers with long arms because safeties, safeties specifically, corners specifically, they cannot, they, and he can jump. They cannot get as high as he can. He becomes a whole different target. He's almost, yeah, I don't know if I want to go Bavaro. I'd almost go like a, 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 you know, Jermichael Finley 2.0 with the ability to catch the football, not necessarily with the running ability, but the ability to get into the seam and catch the football with long arms, leaping ability, apex capability. Uh, yeah, I, I I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, here we go. He also, Bill, go had ahead. a really good quarterback throwing to him last year. Not uh, this past one, the year might, before that. Who might that be, Ben? Jack Cohn. Jack Cohn was his quarterback. Out of the former Some have said program. he made Cone good. Others yeah. say that Cone made Mayer good. Hard to say. <laughs> you love you some good conspiracy, don't you? You do. Uh, let's go back to it. Let's go to Market Plunger. Market Plunger, how you doing today, man? What's going on? Uh, just fine. I First of all, I have to say, I was a really good quarterback and wide receiver, and I'm a trash golfer. <laughs> and, and, and I was a banker, too, so I have no excuse. Uh, right? That's where some of the best deals in Bank are made golfer. or on the golf course. Come on. <laughs> maybe you were anyway, a better I, rather yeah. than playing golf, maybe you were just a better drinker on the course than you were a golfer. That's that's true. I was better uh, yeah, I, I was much better drinking than golf. <laughs> that was the problem part of it. Um but here here's the thing. Now, Ben, I know you were joking a little bit about the handicap, but that is a great example about this whole Aaron Rodgers thing. 
people creating controversy out of stuff they know nothing about. He just, you know, we don't know whether Pebble Beach did that. We don't know how. He didn't even know what it was. Maybe it's eight. Maybe it's eight and a half. Maybe it does translate to ten. We don't know. It's just like, uh, you know, when, when he was on uh, uh, McAfee the other day, or not whatever that guy's name is, uh, the, the punter, and, and he said, uh, at the first thing he said was, I'd love, to, I'd love to end my career here, but I don't even know if it's my last game, or this may have been my last game. And people are like, why would you say that? And then two days later, the Packers come out, and there's this rumor saying, well, they may, they're thinking about trading them. That's why he said it. He was just covering his bases. I don't know if he, I mean, obviously he wants, he likes to get people fired up, but people read way too much into what he says Oh God, yeah. and they don't, they, they don't care to listen to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, his, his ego. Okay. He's got an ego. Who does it? Yes. He is. He, he's the problem in the clubhouse. You show me one player that has come out and said that. And until I hear that, Nobody has. Why? Because he makes a face you don't like after he throws a bad pass. That's why you don't like his attitude. Like, seriously, anybody that knows the man will say the exact opposite. He may have an ego, but he's one of the nicest, most respectful people you'll ever meet. That, and, that, and, uh, go ahead. I don't want to support him because I will trash him when he does something wrong. I'm just saying that people are reading into things that they know nothing about. And if you want to spend your time doing that, that's fine. You have to do it. I respect that. It's your job. I'm not, you know, you keep doing it. No, but I, the rest of us, we don't have to listen. No, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Uh, 100%. But and, here I am talking about it. <laughs> right? Exactly. I was just going to say that. Appreciate the phone call. I look at it this way. There are, you, if you know Aaron, and obviously we've listened to him for years and years and years and years and years, he is very calculated in the things that he says. He's very calculated in the things that he does not say which is why he was, he's on a different plane. You do have to analyze some of the things that he says so you understand what he is try, the message he is trying to get out, okay? Because he doesn't just do things willy-nilly. He's got, there, there is something to everything he tells you. So you do have to go through that. But there are times when he just is being honest and he's answering a question and people want to read into it real deep as to what he's saying. You, you, you know, I mean... Because there's some things I always ask myself, especially like, you know, you, you get into arguments or you get people that talk to you. We've all had people that we've dealt with like this in our lives where you can say something and then there's something that's added. And you ask yourself, why did they have to say that? There's an emotion there. There's a feeling. It strikes a chord with you. Why did you have to say that? You know, um, you know, you, you, you get really excited. You bring people on a trip or something or You guys all go out and meet someplace that you're really excited about, you know, and then, you know, at the end of the night, you say, hey, did you enjoy yourself? And they're like, yeah, I had a blast. And then they proceed to say, you know, well, you know, the fish was dry and this did that and this and that, you know, but other than that, and you're thinking to yourself, did you have to say that if you had a good time with the people around you? It wasn't even a question of the restaurant, but yet you're knocking the restaurant or you're knocking the people around you. There's always something you ask. Why do you say that? And sometimes I ask myself, you know, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, he'll answer a question and then you say, why did you have to say that? Why did you have to end that way? Because remember, like the other day when he said, yeah, you know, apparently there's some of those conversations going on and which is, which is true. Okay. If they're just taking calls, then he says, but without me, interesting. Now that little comment set the world on fire because now it seems like Okay, he's upset again because somebody's talking about him without him being involved. When it could have been incredibly innocuous conversations, right? But there are things that you say that draw attention, and he's very, very, very aware of it. 877-867-1670. Hit us up. We'd love to have you. 877-867-1670. If you want to find us, do it. Give us a shout. We would love to have you on board out here today. We're broadcasting live at, uh, at Stoli's Hog Alley. We're out here in Oconomowoc. Come on out. A uh, tremendous uh, group of people out here. Obviously, uh, one table just opened up, but uh, they do have some uh, seats at the bar. It is a Fish Fry Friday, and they have that salted rye bread, which is so awesome. And you can get perch. You can get walleye. You can get cod. You can get uh, fried cod, baked cod, shrimp dinners, clam chowder. Oh, oh, so good. Oh, so good. 
Come on out. Stoley's Hog Alley out here in Oconomowoc. Uh, in Summit, I got to say Summit because eventually all the people from Summit are going to come in and yell at me and say it's actually in Summit. But you know exactly what I'm talking about. Swing on by and say hi. This portion of the program brought to you by our friends in Pottawatomie Hotel Casino. The restaurants are open. They're uh, changing things out. They're going to put a sports book in, hopefully by the end of uh, the year, but maybe more so August or September. They've got the gaming wide open. The bingo is wide open. 360 bar is going. Plenty of good things at the uh, stay and play packages at Pottawatomie Hotel Casino. Go to PaysBig.com. That is PaysBig.com. Ready. This is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes. Michaels will resume in one minute. Michael will resume in 30 seconds. show brought to you by our friend Lisa Lee Ortel Real Estate. Hey, by the way, congratulations to Lisa. She went on kind of a health uh, binge, if you will, uh, over the last year. She put some before and after pictures up over on her Facebook page. Holy mackerel. Congratulations to her. But she can help you with all your real estate needs, whether you're, you know, looking to buy, sell, invest. Uh, real estate agent wise, she's right here in the state of Wisconsin. You can follow her on Facebook. Uh, Lisa moves wi at gmail.com. But her team they also specialize in loan closings, mortgage refis. They are certified convo specialists. But the biggest part about it is she uh, works with VA loans too, understands them. The VA loans, which can be tricky if you're a veteran out there uh, or you're in the military, she can help you out with that as well, big time. 
So if you're looking for a house, you're looking to refi, you're looking for a property to invest in, get a hold of Lisa, 414-617-6798, 414-617-6798, Lisa Lee or tell when you call her, so you also heard about it on the Bill Michael Show, but to congratulate her, congratulate her on the fitness, not just the weight loss, but the fitness, kind of the reshaping, so to speak. I was rolling across her a Facebook page the other day. I was like, wow, good for her. But Lisa Lee Ortel Realty, good, good stuff. Thanks to her for uh, being a part of the program and being one of our fine sponsors that takes us out to, to Super Bowl. So, Ben, uh, I'm getting uh, questions now. And, and so let me ask you this. If, if the Packers would say, do a deal with Las Vegas. All right. Would you, if you get the, if you get their number seven, first round pick, would you take CJ Stroud? If he was available, would you take CJ Stroud? I would not. And uh, first of all, I don't think he would be. That's a, he's not going to get past four with the Colts, but I wouldn't because I think part of the purpose of doing the Rogers deal is to see what love is. You've invested all of this time into him and uh, he's already there. So you don't need to use it on him. I would either take uh, what a, a great defensive lineman, maybe a wide receiver. Maybe I'd trade back and try to get more picks. And then you, I would like to go into next year, which is set to be a better quarterback draft by all indications mm-hmm. with a lot of ammunition. Who is the better quarterback, Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud? I mean, even the guy out of Kentucky, that Levi's, he's another guy that a lot of people are talking about, and I'm not a fan of his at all. I'll be honest. No, he is. I I mean, I've I've watched enough of him. I I don't think he's any good. He's a project, but I don't think he's any good. You like Richardson out of Florida? I think Richardson out of Florida is better than Will Levi's. Uh, I I don't really like either of them, frankly. He's better. I never said I liked him. I said he's better. Yeah, yeah. Richardson's an athlete where like he, he brings the pure speed power combo Mm -hmm. and you would hope that he can round into throwing. He he has a Cam Newton like game with maybe less accuracy and arm strength than Cam Newton. Yeah. And we saw how long that lasted. Levis is just a, he's a wild card. Um, if I were, if, if we did that deal, I'm not, I, I just, I am obviously you're not taking a quarterback. Um, you would assume you're not, but maybe you, maybe you do. Maybe you take a stab at it. You bring him in, let him compete with Jordan Love. And, you know, then you got a backup in case Jordan Love fails. You don't have to extend him any further. Then you've already got a guy sitting there in the first round that you can grab and develop him in. And that way you don't, you're not, you know, you, you have, plus he then becomes a trade chip. You, you do inside, uh, do indeed decide to get rid of him. However, would you take Nigba out of Ohio state at a wide receiver position? Oh, easily in a heart. I mean, he, I think he's getting slept on kind of like Michael Parsons did. Cause remember Parsons sat out the COVID year at Penn state. Everyone noted character concerns for sitting out. He got drafted high, but he fell a bit and look what he's become. Mm-hmm. Jackson Smith and Jigba was injured all season and people tried to even uh, Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay tried to bring up character concerns that he wasn't rushing back to be with Ohio state in the semifinal game. His his ham his hamstring was messed up all season. Right. But when he was out there last year, it was him, Alave, and Garrett Wilson in 2021. And he was the best of all three. Yeah. And look at what the other two are doing in the league. Right. I'm all over him. I would pick him. Uh the other one uh I got asked about is Quentin Johnson out of TCU. I like him. I really do. I don't know what his I I don't think his ceiling is as is as high as Smith and Jigba. Yeah, that, and that's not a knock on him. I just don't think his ceiling is as high. Would you agree? I think he is closer to a Christian Watson type player in that it's his speed that is really his strength and maybe not a full wide receiver uh, skill set, if you will, mm. which is I, I think he's going to be a good player. But I think Smith and Jigba fits so much more. Uh, the other guy that I, I know it's not a popular pick. But if he's sitting there, I'd go after Peter Skaronsky out of Northwestern in a heartbeat. The big tackle now, he play, he's a left tackle. So, you know, he then becomes maybe the incumbent if, uh, or not the incumbent, but maybe the, uh, the next man up, so to speak, if indeed you move on from Bakhtiari. But that might not be a bad way to go. But if he can also play right tackle, 
maybe then you got Zach Tom as your backup on because Zach Tom's more of a guard. He played admirably on the outside, but he's more of a guard. And if you can uh, make Skaronsky your right tackle while you have Bakhtiari, and then when Bakhtiari decides to, you know, move on and the Packers move on from Bakhtiari, then you've got Skaronsky there waiting in the wings. But that might be a direction I go to because then you're fortifying. Because, you know, Gudikin said it. He said, look, it, it's hard to it, it's hard to find good left tackles. And I think Skaronsky would be, not to mention a name like Skaronsky, how can you not be a good, def, you know, a good offensive lineman? You know what I mean? But uh, that would be the way I'd go. So anyway, I I, I didn't want to get too deep into the draft, but we we you know the Bill minute on. we start bringing up players, everybody all of a sudden you know starts to come out with a guy that they like. You know what I mean? Real quick on Skaronsky, yeah. I we've had a couple Wisconsin players out at our show at Monks, and I, there are some people talking about him moving to guard. But I I was talking with the the guys. Uh, some of them are outside linebackers about the best players they faced last year. Right. And Dewan Jones, one of the Ohio state kids is one of them. I think he's really good. They weren't that impressed by Skaronsky. Really? So for whatever it's worth compared to some of the other guys they played, they didn't, they, they thought Northwestern scheme really saved him, if you will. But hmm. Interesting. We'll see. Interesting stuff because he is, everybody's got him rated incredibly high. And I, now again, I don't, I'm not a connoisseur of Northwestern football. But when I did start to watch him a little bit, um, I just watched their footwork because you can always build strength. Okay. You can always build strength. You can always build that, you know, that tenacity, but his footwork is really solid. It's got to get better and he's got to get a little quicker, but his footwork is solid. And if you've got a good base, you, you usually turn in, you usually turn in pretty good turn out to be pretty good. So I'm, I'd be, uh, I, you'd be hard pressed to tell me that he's not, but then again, guys have guys have, you know, faced him. Well, who knows? Uh, eight, seven, seven, eight, six, seven, 16, 70, eight, seven, seven, eight, six, seven, 16, uh, 70. If you want to give us a shout, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Uh, we'd love to have you this portion of the pack or this, this portion of the program, I should say brought to Joey, our, our buddy, Joey Albanese, Albanese's roadhouse. Uh, they announced that, that they are selling a property and it's going to become a car wash, obviously enough or oddly enough, but uh, that means they only have a few months left. And if you want to go out and say goodbye uh, to the tremendous food and everything that they have going on at Albanese's on Blue Mound Road in uh, Brookfield slash Waukesha, by all means, stop in and, and tell Joey and the gang, give them a hug and uh, wish them nothing but the best in whatever the next venture is going to be. Maybe there's some catering in the future or something, but uh, boy, I tell you what, to speaking from my own personal experiences, they're right down the street from my house. And every now and then we'll just go in get the meatball, sub and the lasagna and such and it's just so good uh but going and say hi to joey and the gang over at albanese's stay tuned we got a whole lot more of the bill michael show coming up right after this this is the bill michael show on the wisconsin sports zone radio network Everywhere you look, from groceries to utilities to gas, prices keep going up. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin can dramatically help lower your energy costs year-round by replacing drafty windows and doors in as little as six weeks. And now you can save even more by taking advantage of 0% interest for up to 48 months when you lock in your prices by February 28th. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Bring the love of Wisconsin's outdoors in through the beauty and quality craftsmanship of Pella Windows and Doors. Whether you're updating or upgrading the look and comfort of your home, Pella has extensive lines of customizable options to meet your needs and your budget, no matter the season. Replacing drafty windows and doors can dramatically lower your energy costs. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin offers some of the most energy efficient windows in the industry. Designed to keep the cold outside where it belongs. Lock in your prices by February 28th and get 0% interest for up to 48 months. Visit PellaWI.com. Bill Michaels will resume in five minutes.
Phil Michaels will resume in four minutes. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes. Bill Michaels will resume in two minutes. Bill Michaels will resume in one minute. Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. Welcome back to the program, the Bill Michaels Show. Come on in, all the way in. Taking pictures here. Uh, while we're, uh, if you're watching over on the Bud Light live stream and hanging out with us, we are at Stoli Sog Alley. We're out here in Lake Country, Fish Fry Friday, famous Fish Fry Friday. So if you want to stop out and say hi, please do so. And in addition to that, uh, don't forget our friends at Bud Light bringing the program. And there's some Bud Light tchotchke stuff to give away out here today as well. Talking Packers football. We're going to add a little bit of basketball as well as the Bucks got a nice win last night. And good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Talk about you all the time. Our friends uh, out here at Stoley's Hog Alley and uh, kind of the grand reopening, if you will, as uh, things are, you know, up and running and it's uh, kind of a 
long time coming, but uh, they got it back together, and man, it's beautiful. And I, I've just sent, telling Jeff, I can't wait, can't wait to get out here uh, in the summertime, man. I'm telling you what, uh, on the upper deck, it is a uh, box of cigars, a couple of beverages, and I may be pantsless. So just to, for those that decide to bring families out here, it might be an adult-only deck uh, upstairs later on. Point. <laughs> 877-867-1670. You want to find us, feel free. Go ahead and give us a shout. Uh, 877-867-1670 uh, if you choose to do so. This is uh, a couple of different things here. Um, this is from Merlin. He said, everybody in Packers organization from management to uh, multiple players were saying how Rodgers was making just unbelievable plays in practice. They knew at that time, not much, but a little praise uh, from a couple people regarding Jordan Love. I hope I'm wrong, but... And I've been saying this for a long time now. There are people that are in the Jordan Love camp. And I, I don't, you know, want to be the bucket of cold water on that enthusiasm. All I'm saying is, is I don't know what you have seen that has make, made you go, oh, yeah, this is it. I don't think there's anybody out there that looks at this and says, oh, boy, he's, he's going to be really, really good. Now, let me back you up, Merlin, because going back to those days, also the media was allowed to see a lot more back then. Matt LaFleur doesn't allow the media to see much. It's basically come on in, watch a stretch, go through some warm-ups. You can check off everybody that is and is not practicing. You see a couple of, you know, run-throughs, and that's it. The you know, media gets booted out. It's not like the old days where you got to sit in and just hang out at practice for a longer period of time. Uh, it's it's just not the same. So Maybe you don't get a chance to see everything that Jordan Love has going on behind the scenes. But I will say this. Um, the From what we saw, go back to training camp. From what we saw going back to training camp, you saw Jordan Love from OTAs, mini camp, into training camp. You saw Jordan Love work with the guys. You saw because he was getting all the reps. And then Rodgers came in. And it was like watching Pee Wee football versus the NFL. It just was different. And Rodgers was making throws and looking impressive. But remember, the defense also was making some plays. You know, we talked a lot about the defense uh in this in this camp, and we thought, oh my God, this defense is gonna be lights out, top five, you know. And it turned out it wasn't that the defense was top five. It was that the offense was bottom three. They were dysfunctional. They weren't in sync. They weren't on the same page. They weren't playing well together. And it, it just it, it wasn't a good situation. So, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to knock Jordan Love. I just look at what he did in his career, what I've seen from him so far, and there is nothing that leads me to believe there is greatness on the horizon. When I spoke with Aaron Rodgers, when I watched Aaron Rodgers, when you got a chance to see him behind closed doors, even say the game against Dallas, you know, when uh, the Packers were trailing, uh, Favre goes down with the injury, you know, and, and you see him play against Dallas, you thought, man, they had a few more minutes in that game. Rodgers brings it back and they get a win, you know? but. I, there was something there. Maybe there is. And I, if, for our sake, as a Packers fan, I hope there is for, for Jordan Love. I hope there's something there. I really do. Because it's much easier to talk about a winning team than it is about a losing team. And to have a legitimate shot at winning a Super Bowl and getting to a championship every year, that's the best case scenario. For not only personally as a fan, but for, for the business. Um. So, but I, you're right, Merlin, that there haven't been a lot of people that went, oh, God, yeah, he's a real deal. Haven't seen that and haven't heard that. Uh, Rick, you're right. Tom Clements seems to have fixed some of Jordan Love's issues. Some of the footwork has been, I, I, I will say this, the footwork has been a lot better just from what you've had a chance to see. 100% agree. 100% agree. 877-867-1670, uh, 877-867-1670. 1670. Um, some people want to talk about the win last night. Uh, the Badgers men's basketball program uh, gets a win over Ohio State. Ben, 
Uh, not a huge win by any stretch of the imagination, but one, it's a win in the Big Ten. And two, when you look at it, first of all, it's a win on the road, which is not easy. And, uh, but, it, you know, I mean, obviously Ohio State was flailing. They lost seven of their last eight. The Badgers came into this losing six of their last seven. But to get a win on the road, to kind of get it back together, to put a 43 in the first half was impressive at Value City Arena. It was impressive. What was not as impressive was turning the ball over and some of the mistakes they had and some of the off shooting they had in the second half of that game. But it's a win. And I've always said you just you just get a win, and sometimes those win can wins can give you a little bit of a springboard forward, uh, and and kind of put you back on the right path. What did you see last night? I don't know if you watched the game or not. I know you guys had the Thursday night uh, Kenny and Heilprin show, but what did you see last night that was encouraging? Yeah, sorry to hear about your Buckeyes. They <laughs> it's been a tough season out there. It's you know what I, I the program had a real rise a while ago. <laughs> Thad Mata had them going really really well and. They've obviously had some coaching changes, and then it just it's kind of fallen off. So they haven't oh, been. Uh, Holtman is brutal. Yeah, they have not been, you know, uh, an overly uh, impressive basketball team for a while, and I don't think they're going to be. They need, they need, uh, you know, if if you're Ohio State at this point in time, and you're going to make another coaching change, you got to find yourself somebody. You know, you got to, you really got to find yourself somebody and quit. You know. They go after the innocuous, like they're going to be the smartest guy in the room, and sometimes you just need to find somebody, that guy, you know, somebody in a system that's going to come in and and just not only be able to recruit, but be able to coach the talent that you have. Sometimes I don't know what the hell they're doing in just games I've seen. So anyway, I digress. Go ahead. I actually got home last night the minute Wisconsin stopped scoring, which was the last eight minutes of the game. So that was really fun to turn on and watch that stretch of basketball. But – I don't know. They've they're struggling. They're not playing good basketball and winning a road game in the Big 10 is important. They're a couple games out of second to last place in the conference, but they're also a couple games out of fourth. So it's a true whenever you can find a win, you take it. Yeah. It's a tough conference. The team clearly is not very good. Like they they need to play at a certain level. They need to play uh, up to their full potential to win some of these games and right. When they are a little off, it clearly goes poorly. So I don't know. It's I, a good win. I like. The I, fact I hope they make the tournament. That a lot of these young guys are getting opportunities, and you're going to be able to draw off of that going in the next season. But um, when you look at the Big Ten overall, and I know this is going to piss off a lot of people, the Big Ten's down this year in basketball. It just is. Um, you know, you, you you know Illinois is okay. Rutgers decent. I was decent. But it's it's there's not a lot of domination coming out of the Big Ten. Indiana ranked 21. I think it's 21, if I'm not mistaken, Indiana is. But I think it's just Indiana and Purdue. Purdue, number one in the country. I think it's Indiana, and that's it, right? Nobody else is ranked in the Big Ten. Oh, I don't know that. But there also are some teams that are good but keep losing, if that makes sense. No, I can understand that. You know, you're, you're on the cusp. You just got to figure out how to win games. But... By the time it's all said and done, uh, beating up on one another and not having a lot of big out-of-conference wins and only a couple of ranked teams in the Big Ten, that doesn't build your RPI. You know, you need you need some of these teams to catch fire. You'd like to see Illinois catch fire or Iowa catch fire or Michigan State get back to playing Michigan State basketball. But uh, they're, they're only a game above 500 in the Big Ten, if I'm not mistaken. There's a whole bunch of teams that are sitting right there, I think, like you had mentioned, like at, at, at seven and four or six and five or something like that. And um, you're, I mean, you could get on a win streak and win three games in one week, and suddenly you're you're number two in the in the conference. You know what I mean? That's that's how jumbled it is. There's Purdue and everybody else, and that's how jumbled it is right now in the Big Ten. Big Ten not as strong, nearly as strong, as they have been been in the past. Eight seven seven eight six seven sixty seventy. Uh, on the other hand, though, you got uh, Marquette, and I mentioned them the other day. Marquette sitting with uh, Xavier atop the Big East, uh, ranked number 14th in the country. I think Xavier is a couple of notches behind them. Providence is right there. UConn's uh, ranked in, in the uh, in the top 25, so they've got some strength there. The Big 12 got a lot of – boy, the Big 12 is just stacked. Um, there's obviously Kansas is there every year. There's TCU. There's Iowa State. There's uh, K-State, Baylor. Uh, who am I forgetting um, that is also ranked there? 
or somebody else. Um, I was just looking at it. Crap. Uh, Texas. Texas. Texas is ranked as well. So they've got some teams that are right there. So um, yeah, the Big Ten, when it comes to ranked teams, a little bit weaker this year. That's for sure. Uh, let's do this. We'll step away. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, got Mike Clemens coming up in the next hour. So hang out for that. We are broadcasting live. We're at Stoley's Hog Alley. Uh, out here in Oconomowoc, and it has been great to see everybody stopping by and saying hello and saying hi to Steve and, and Stacy and Kathy and, and Mark and a couple of the people that were in the back back there a little bit earlier when I went to, over to use the facilities, we'll say, during the last commercial break. Thanks to everybody and, and Jeff and Alicia. It's been such a fun time hanging out out here with everybody. This portion of the program brought to you by our good friends over there at Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. And right now, Pella is running the deal where it's 48 months, no interest. It's that simple. For, but you only have until the end of the month, so get it booked. We know the weather is cold. We know that there's some ice forming on your windows or doors right now, and it shouldn't be. So what you do is you call Pella. You get the free in-home consultation, whether it's a door, whether it's a window. You can pick out the type, whether it's interior or exterior changes you want to make, roll screen, slider windows, di different types. The, you know, the big, uh, the big uh, patio doors like I have, which I just absolutely love. But make the change. No interest, 48 months. That's from our friends at Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Go to Pella, P-E-L-L-A, PellaWI.com. That is PellaWI.com or call them 855-PELLA-WI, 855-PELLA-WI. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is The Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Any season is grilling season, and you can get your favorite cuts delivered right to your doorstep. Go to ScholzyFamilyBeef.com. That's ScholzyFamilyBeef.com. They say the sky's the limit, but why stop there? This February at Potawatomi Casino Hotel, you can reach for the stars. Each Thursday night, if the stars align, you can reach for a piece of 400000 in cash and prizes. Just play with your club card to earn entries three times on drawing days. Your win is written in the stars. Just play to find it. Only at Potawatomi. I'm glad for more. One year old than a club play. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes.
Bill Michael will resume in 30 seconds. Mike Clemens. The Chiefs held practice yesterday, but head coach Andy Reid says they're banged up after beating the Bengals. Um, injuries. Uh, McCall Hartman uh, will not practice today. I, uh, he did a great job of playing in that game the other day. My heart goes out to the kid because he busts his tail. He is hurting them. Juju had, uh, has some knee swelling. He won't practice. And Jerry Sneeds in the concussion protocol. He won't practice. Kadarius Tony. Practice with the ankle sprain. Receiver McCorl Hardman suffered a pelvis injury during the AFC Championship game, and the Chiefs say he won't be able to play in the Super Bowl. In Philly, tight end Dallas Goddard talked about being drafted by the Eagles in 2018, the year after they had just won their first Super Bowl. You know, I looked up to all those guys. Um, obviously, getting to the Super Bowl is the pinnacle of this sport. Uh, winning the Super Bowl is the pinnacle of this sport. So, got to learn from a lot of guys that were here right after it. Got to hear. Uh, their stories, how amazing it was, things like that. So it just made me even more hungry to uh, get there. And, you know, here we are. And Aaron Rodgers was teeing off at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. CBS reporter and former PGA golfer Cole Nost asked Rodgers this question. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Cole. You got any news you want to share with us? I'm going to San Fran. <laughs> you look great with a cowboy star on your helmet. <laughs> We'll have updates every day next week from Super Bowl 57 in Phoenix. I'm Mike Clemens on The Bill Michaels Show. As they're in Nicaragua, and I'm looking forward to what their experience was like doing some uh, walking through the the tobacco fields, the big leaf fields and such for the cigars. But uh, they've got uh, entertainment down there each and every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if you are looking for a good place to go, downtown Waukesha, 323 West Main Street, stop in and uh, just enjoy yourself. Whether it's a cigar, a good whiskey, fine whiskey, something off the tap, hookahs, they have it all, not to mention good entertainment, just good hospitality as well. Uh, 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. This was from uh, Anthony who says, with all the coaches leaving Green Bay, what does that say about their coaching staff? Well, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. Have they launched? Now, Basachi has gone through three interviews, right, in in Indianapolis. He has not been officially hired, first and foremost. Correct. Um, So that's, you know, I understand that. Uh, the only one, the other one that left was Jerry Gray, right? Yep, to That's my it. understanding. And Jerry Gray, we we knew there were issues there. There were some ph- philosophical issues. You could just tell during the season when he would get questioned about the secondary guys that there was something going on, and he just would always defer to Joe Barry, and so you'd have to ask Joe. And, you know, don't ask me. I'm not calling it. Just ask Joe. And so you kind of got the understanding there was something going on there. But well, beyond that, nobody else has really left. It's not like a mass exodus, like guys are just jumping ship. There is something there, um, you know, I would assume defensively speaking. But other than that, I'm not overly, uh, you know, concerned that there is a lot of, you know, people that aren't happy with Matt LaFleur and the coaching staff. Uh, Jay Qual says fans thought Rashawn Gary was a reach. But, hey, what do they know? Um, you know what? I will agree with that. I was somebody that said, now, I will say this. When you talk about an edge rusher, uh, you know, it's not Reggie White, but he's been extremely good, far better than I thought he would be. But uh, so I'll take that as a first round wrong. I, I'll admit that. But, you know, hey, how many general managers have hit and miss on players in the first round? How many fans have guessed about a particular player in the first round that you said, you know, it's going to happen and it just didn't, you know? So the draft is not an exact science. Otherwise, it would be easy and everybody would do it, right? 
Another hour yet to go. Broadcasting live at Stoley's Hog Alley out here in Oconomowoc. Come on out. It's a fish fry Friday. Clam chowder. Hot. Warm you up. Good stuff. Made the homemade way. Made the homemade. It only comes in a bowl, too. Don't worry about cups and bowls. Just get a big bowl of it. Warm up. Good stuff. From the clam chowder out here. Stoley's Hog Alley. More of the Bill Michael Show coming up next. is a Wisconsin Sports Zone update. Well, the Bucks work back from a 21-point deficit to beat the Clippers 106-105 last night. Giannis Antetokounmpo had 54 points. His second 50-point game in the last week, third this season. It was the sixth straight win for Milwaukee. They're going to host Miami tomorrow night. Turning to Wisconsin, they found a way last night to beat Ohio State 65-60 despite not making a shot from the field in the final 7-18 of the game. Allowed the Buckeyes to nearly erase a 15-point deficit before some big late free throws from Chucky Hepburn. It took away what was... Probably Wisconsin's best half of basketball of last month. But Coach Greg Gard says you have to deal with the good and the bad. Our first 32 minutes were pretty good. Our last seven or eight, you know, need to be better. So you're going to have stretches just like a season. You're going to go through highs and lows and try to make sure the highs don't take you to a place where that you don't need to be. And you can't make sure you have to make sure the lows don't be rock bottom. And the same thing within a game. Badgers now five and six in Big Ten play. They'll host Northwestern on Sunday. Get insurance from a company who knows Wisconsin and cares about your community. You may know Rural Mutual Insurance as the number one farm insurer. Did you know they also offer competitive home and auto rates? Visit RuralMutual.com to learn more about products and discounts. Rural Mutual Insurance, keeping Wisconsin strong. We don't know if Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers is going to be playing next year or not, but we do know if he does, it won't be with the 49ers. During his round at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am yesterday, Rodgers was asked if he had any news to share on his future, but all he said is, quote, I'm not going to San Fran. Meanwhile, Wisconsin coach Luke Fickle said fans will get a chance to see the new look Badgers as they're going to be holding a spring game for the first time in a few years. That will be happening April 22nd. With this Wisconsin Sports Zone Network update, I'm Zach Heil. that is uh, from the town of Summit that comes in and says, hey, hey, give us our props. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to Kohler. You know, you got a, you got a Kohler, and then you got over there on the lake, it's a different municipality, but they still call it Kohler. And uh, they, they take offense. It's like, no, it's not. So I want to make sure I uh, include our friends from Summit in that as well. 877 877-867-1670, 877-867-1670. 1670. Uh, if you want to find us, that's the way. You can also hit us up via email. Try that. Uh, at, you've got thebillmichaels at gmail.com. Our buddy Steve, as a matter of fact, says, hey, I've been looking at the NFL draft for uh, the year, and I agree about Mayer. Uh, I think there's two very intriguing tight ends in the draft. Uh, Dalton Kincaid from Utah and Darnell Washington from Georgia can also be had in rounds two or three. I also like the edge rusher Luke Van Ness from Iowa. Van Ness reminds me of a little bit of Clay Matthews. Great size, 6'6", 270 with really good speed. Benny says, keep an eye on Justin Rose at Pebble Beach this weekend. He said, I'm not saying that he's going to win it, but I think he's going to be right there come Sunday. And lastly, safe travels to Arizona. I'm looking forward to next week, Radio Row. I think that's really the best week of the year for the Bill Michael Show. That's our buddy Steve in Richfield. Uh, Justin Rose, you got him, Ben? I don't like Justin Rose. Not this weekend, or you just don't like him at all? Man, in general. He's playing well, though. That was... Uh... <laughs> So you don't Big like call him. though. Okay. I mean, he's tied for third right now. You know, <laughs> I too think he will be a part. Okay. I'm he, kidding. He'll be close. You just don't like him. Whatever. Why don't, don't you? Like why don't him. you like Justin Rose? Just just because personality wise, something conflicts with what it is you have within you. He he's always just irritated me for no reason. Ah, <laughs> so, okay. uh, there you go. I got gotcha. you. 
Uh, what else do we have here? This is from Mike, who says, uh, looking forward to the Waste Management Open. Are you guys going to be attending? And if you guys were out there and Ben was with you, which what, which where, which place would Ben go to? Where would he end up? Ben, would you choose the Waste Management Jail. Open over your job? <laughs> I was going to say, where would you end up? Yeah, that'd probably be about it. You'd be parked at 16 with a bevy of cans in your hand, hoping for the best possible scenario, I think, right? So you're asking would I go to work or would I go drink on a golf course? Uh, I think that answer is obvious. My point. I think you'd give up your job to be able to go drink on a golf course, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I live in Wisconsin where there's no golf course open. <laughs> right. Uh, this one's from uh, our friend Mark who said, uh, talking Badger hoops. Uh, he said, I think they're going to be NIT bound at best. They just don't have enough shooters to be sustainable, uh, especially if you start to look into the tournament when you need big shots down the stretch. Who are you going to go to? Um, that's, that's a good question when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to Badger basketball. They, like last night, they went cold in the second half. And just, you know, like I said, a couple of turnovers, couldn't buy some shots at times. But um, just didn't look uh, didn't look awesome, you know. Chucky Hepburn, obviously solid. It, it, who who are you going to go to? You going to go to Crowell Hepburn? Who are you going to go to if you got to make one shot, final shot of the game, Ben? It sounds very cliche, but I'd go with the hot hand. It seems to change every game. I Hepburn's the easy answer, but there are some games where he's so off. So I could say uh -huh. a Siegen. If if he is a hot hand, I go to him. If Crowell's the one scoring, it's true. Like. They've been hot and cold across the board. Um, your the best percentage shooter you have, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is Stephen Crowell, right? I think Crowell's your best guy. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those buckets are from two feet. Right. But he's probably your best field goal percentage shooter. Uh, three-point shooter, we'll say, then it's Chucky Hepburn. Chucky Hepburn, um, there, nobody shoots really well beyond the arc. Nobody does on this team. Um, Chucky Hepburn's about it. And that's what I'm saying. So if you got to hit, say, a big bucket from the corner or a bucket at the top of the key or a bucket beyond the arc, it's probably Chucky Hepburn, but I agree with you. And, and when you say that, Ben, when you say, well, you go with a hot hand, you're correct. But that also tells you you don't have that consistent shooter to go to. That statement, which is will, a which is big problem, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I to answer your email, I I don't know who I'd go with. You know, you you look at Chucky and probably say he'd be the guy, but you know, like Ben alluded to, that we've seen so many times where it just goes cold. The shoot, you know, and the shooting just ooh, sometimes it's just I don't know, it's kind of a be kind of atrocious for lack of a better term. But, you know, hey, get a few more wins, find yourself maybe uh, on the bubble or getting into the tournament, and then see what happens, you know? At least you can say you're there, and you keep getting some of these young guys that type of experience. There's, you know, you, you can't, you know, I know NIT gets you tournament experience as well, but it's not the same. We all know that. It's not the same. Because uh, for the NIT, I'm not, I, I'm not sitting there with the TV on, my feet propped up uh, in what underwear I have watching that game with Thin Mints. It's not the same. I'm just saying. There's your visual of the day. Uh, 877-867-1670. Um, here you Bill, go. we do have some breaking oh, news yeah. out of the NBA. You get to it? I just saw that, yeah. Um, so not only last night did we have a Donnybrook broke out when uh, Dylan Brooks and Donovan Mitchell went at it last night, and there was a punch to the crotch and dirty play, and then benches cleared, and the fight spilled into the front row of the fans. Point. So uh, now you've got the Brooklyn Nets all-star Kyrie Irving once out. Once out. Uh, his, people have, that, <laughs> his people have informed the, uh, the Nets uh, that uh, he wants to move on. He wants to get out by the trade deadline. Or he will be gone in free agency, doesn't want to come back. So the, uh, the, the all-star that is Kyrie Irving, who has played well, but – would you want Kyrie Irving on your team? He has been so, he's a lightning rod for so many things that are on the negative side. But would you want Kyrie Irving on your team? Now, 
you I, and I don't know what kind of capital they have. I haven't gotten that into the analytical side of things when it comes to the Lakers, but uh, the Lakers are trying to make a move to bring in another shooter to try to find some help for LeBron, to try to get them a couple of wins to where they can find themselves in the postseason, and who knows, it goes off and running from there. That would be an incredible compliment to LeBron, but could Kyrie exist in L.A. with the other guys that are there and Westbrook and 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 Anthony Davis, and, and can he co- coexist with the egos that are already on the floor? You know, he always has said, oh, it's, it's not me. But then again, he's always involved in something, always got something to say, and always seems to be a lightning rod. And would Kyrie Irving even be a fit out there? Could they even fit him in? But uh, who knows? But the Brooklyn Nets All-Star has said he wants out of Brooklyn. Um, and then, obviously, I had mentioned that you had the, the fight last night. Did you see that fight? Punch to the groin last night. Who does that, man? I thought we're beyond that now. Who does that? Mitchell, I, you know, now, now Brooks apparently has been labeled a dirty player for a long time. And uh, last night, Donovan Mitchell standing, uh, now Brooks goes down, and he, Bro, you know, Donovan Mitchell kind of standing above him, and Brooks turns around and just, for lack of a better term, throws the elbow and the fist right into his crotch, just punches him right in the, right in the junk. And then he throws the basketball at him, and then down they go, and it's, it, it was on, and then the bench is cleared. Security came out. You know, Garland was right there jumping into it, trying to grab security people. Brooks is on the ground. Mitchell's going at it with him, and then they spilled into uh, – they were on the baseline. They spilled into the front row of the fans. The fans were down there getting involved. You could see a couple of people kind of diving out of the way. One guy's protecting his beer. One woman is filming the whole thing. She was sitting there in the front row. She's filming the whole thing. It wasn't the best of look. So, you know, you've got the Cavs guard, Donovan Mitchell, now accusing Memphis, uh, Dylan, Memphis's Dylan Brooks being a dirty player, and they both got ejected. You know there's going to be suspensions for throwing punches and such, and probably just for the fact that they, uh, you know, got into the the front row of the fans. So the fans got their money's worth last night. That's for damn sure, but that went on. And then you've got uh, more breaking news today coming out of the NBA that Kyrie Irving wanting a trade out of Brooklyn. So there you go. Hey, what Giannis last night after the game started to wax nostalgic about Culver's, Ben, do you have that? Yeah, I can grab it. Yeah, last night, which was, first of all, Giannis drops 54 last night. So it was a cool cool game, and if you stayed up to watch the whole thing, uh, because it didn't get started until 9 o'clock, but it was kind of cool last night to watch. And, um, you know, Giannis uh, comes up big. They get a win. It wasn't pretty, but they got a win. They battled. They battled the whole night. They've now won six in a row. So the Bucks seem to have things at least put a little bit back on track. And uh, Giannis, after the ball game last night, uh, you know, talked a little bit about, uh, talked a little bit about, um, uh, I, he just started talking about Culver's. So here's what he had to say. This time I went to, um, I went to Chick-fil-A and, uh, got the nuggets, but now tomorrow I think I'm going to go to uh, Culver's, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to get uh, 50 cheeseburgers and, uh, I'm going to try to eat as many as I can. And, uh, the rest, uh, I have my, my son eat them or I give them to my dog. I'm sure they'll be waiting for that. I, I remember about a week ago. Um, no way I'm going to Culver's because uh, Chick-fil-A did not give me no free meals. <laughs> I know Culver's will give me free meals. I trust Culver's. So he's making how much money? Like $40 million a year, and he's looking for a free meal. He's going to Culver's. He's going to buy 50 cheeseburgers, try to eat as many as he can. Cheeseburg- Culver's cheeseburgers, you put that much butter burger in you, you, you you're lubing a shoot. That's about the extent of it. You're not doing anything more than that. Uh, for his next game, man, I wouldn't want to be playing behind him on a dribble drive. That's for damn sure because the word dribble drive might really mean something different at that point in time. You get 50 of those butter burgers going. Uh, by the way, last night, you cannot go anywhere if you have a call by one Kevin Harlan. And last night when Donovan Mitchell and Brooks went at it, uh, Kevin Harlan on the microphone last evening. Take a listen. Point. Yeah. Ooh, it's hard to to know intent. Yeah, right there. That's not our job, but that's what started it all. Wow, and then threw him down. Kevin Harlan with a boink. <laughs> Kevin's great. The descriptiveness. I love Kevin Harlan. Uh, let's do this. We got Mike Clemens coming up, so stay tuned. We're going to talk with him 
uh, about his thoughts, and uh, we'll wax a little bit as we get ready to wing our way to Arizona. We are broadcasting live today. We are over at Stoley's Hog Alley, and uh, come on out, not only now uh, for the crowd that's here now, but uh, for a little bit later on. Uh, because uh, tonight they're going to have a hell of a fish fry. And you want to, I don't know if they even take reservations, but the last couple of times I tried to get in here on a Friday night, it was packed. And they were on like an hour wait. So get here early or get here late. One of the two. But the fish fries are always great. That marble salted marble rye bread is just so good. I get the baked cod, which is absolutely fantastic. Parsley, a little bit of butter, lemon pepper. So good. You can get a Cajun as well. Uh, and then again, if you want to get the fried cod, more the traditional fish fry, they have walleye, they have perch, so many good things. And uh, then if you're just going to come regular, I mean, they have all the, uh, you know, Stoli's traditional appetizers and all the different pizzas and such. But it's the grand reopening, and they just uh, finished this beautiful addition and renovated the whole place, as a matter of fact, and it's just awesome. So come out to Lake Country in Oconomowoc and check out our friends at Stoli's Hog Alley. This portion of the program brought to you by Skipper Bud. Speaking of Lake Country, our friends at Skipper Buds, not far from here, as a matter of fact, for the one in Pewaukee. But to the boat show has been a huge success. And uh, get a hold of our buddy Todd. He's the GM over there. Call him, 262-544-1200, or go to skipperbuds.com. But they have yachts. They have pontoons, sport decks, fishing, uh, sport and deck boats, fishing boats, and the best in jet water sports and stuff. And they've got Mastercraft and Tyga and Scarab and, and smoker craft and star craft and cruisers and four winds. And I can go on and on, but they got it all. And the 2023s are arriving and you get a great deal on the leftovers from the 22, 2022s and the trades and used. So plenty, no reason. Cause you're going to start dreaming about uh, the summertime. Get a, get a hold of our friends at skipper buds today. Call Todd 262 544 1200 262 544 1200 and get yourself on the water this summer. Mike Clemens joining us next on the Bill Michael Show. Covering Wisconsin sports like a blanket, this is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Everywhere you look, from groceries to utilities to gas, prices keep going up. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin can dramatically help lower your energy costs year-round by replacing drafty windows and doors in as little as six weeks. And now you can save even more by taking advantage of 0% interest for up to 48 months when you lock in your prices by February 28th. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Bring the love of Wisconsin's outdoors in through the beauty and quality craftsmanship of Pella Windows and Doors. Whether you're updating or upgrading the look and comfort of your home, Pella has extensive lines of customizable options to meet your needs and your budget, no matter the season. Replacing drafty windows and doors can dramatically lower your energy costs. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin offers some of the most energy efficient windows in the industry. Designed to keep the cold outside where it belongs. Lock in your prices by February 28th and get 0% interest for up to 48 months. Visit PellaWI.com. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes.
Bill Michaels will resume in one minute. Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. This is an issue that's been bubbling and percolating beneath the surface all off season long to the point, as we mentioned, that the Packers president, Mark Murphy, flew out from Green Bay out west to meet with Aaron Rodgers. And then the general manager, Brian Gutekunst, flew out west to meet with Aaron Rodgers. And then the head coach, Matt LaFleur, flew out west. Obviously, there's some things that are hard sometimes, but, you know, as we go down this road, I think you got to keep in mind, you know, how much we want Aaron to be here and how important he is to our organization. So, I think, like I said, I'm optimistic and we'll, and we'll see how it unfolds. How long going on? Welcome back to the program. We are broadcasting live. We are here at Stoley's Hog Alley in Oconomowoc. And uh, before we do anything, I have to uh, say thank you so much to uh, Jeff and Alicia, and uh, for those that are watching on the Bud Light live stream, you'll, you'll catch this, but uh, they came out and they brought me uh, Valentine treats. So there you go, cupcakes and chocolates and little cakes and all kinds of stuff, and they're serving them up right now through Valentine's Day. They had a big uh, lady shopping night here last night. That was a big success, but uh, Alicia, Jeff's wife, came in and said, here, we're going to give you some Valentine stuff. So early Valentine's Day. I'm appreciating that. Meanwhile, Mike Clemens joining us on the hotline. Mike, oh, how you been, bud? Pretty good. Last week on the show, you had Wayne Larrabee for the whole noon hour, right? Right. right. And Wayne came in, and and you said, "Well, how you doing, Wayne?" And he said, "You know, it's it's like getting to be you know a typical winter in Wisconsin. It's gray. It's kind of cloudy. Uh, there's snow on the ground, and everyone's worried about it. You know what's going to happen, to Aaron Rodgers? It's like you know Groundhog Day, yep. right? Yep. Over and over again." And it got me thinking about, you know, you know, how are we on this this winter merry-go-round again every year? Because I remember last year he was signing this contract extension where he was going to finish a Packer. Right. And now, you know, what happened to that? If it says I, I had to double check the date, March of 2022. That was last year, right? Right. Aaron Rodgers is being locked up for at least 150 million dollars and three to four years and blah, blah, blah. But then everybody learns more about the contract. Well, this is a void year and the Packers could get out of it if they want to. But here's, here's Mark Murphy a year ago when asked about if people are uncertain about Aaron Rodgers future in green Bay. I'll say this. There's no way in heck (laughs) that Aaron is not going to be on the Packers. I mean, he's, he is uh, going to be the MVP of the league. Might've had his best year ever. He's our unquestioned leader. And, you know, we're not idiots. <laughs> it almost you seems... remember that? I do, and it almost seems comical now when you hear it, knowing everything that's been speculative over the last, say, couple of weeks, and since the season ended, and since he walked off arm-in-arm arm with Randall Cobb and, and, and all of that, and then, obviously, you know, even Aaron at one point saying, you know, when asked, is, I think it was by Rob Domofsky, you know, does this mean you're a Packer for the rest of your career? And, oh, definitely. And now we're talking about the possibility of him not being here. It's just, it's bananas, man. Although, although Mark Murphy has been unusually quiet for months now, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, on Saturday mornings, the first Saturday morning of the month, he does that little letters to the editor kind of thing where he answers fans questions and everything. Right. But I mean, Murphy hasn't been available for months, maybe since the last stockholders meeting. So yesterday, Aaron is out golfing, and I think it was an important thing he said this week, Tuesday, on those McAfee shows. Like, I don't know, but right now, I, this is my free time, okay? I haven't figured out how I'm going to spend my vacation, okay? Yeah. We, we just finished up football like two, three weeks ago, and I'm trying to figure out 
where I want to travel over the next five or six weeks before I decide if and when I want to start lifting weights and be a, you know, still be a football player uh, and uh, you know, ending uh, going to, to 40 years old. So yesterday, there's this guy named Colt Nost who used to be a PGA golfer. He lives in the Dallas, Texas area. He worked for CBS Sports. He's alongside there, and they're at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am, and Aaron Rodgers is coming up to the tee, and this happened. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Colt. Got any news you want to share with us? Not going to San Fran. <laughs> you look great with a cowboy star on your helmet. Yeah, um, he was specific, saying he's not going to San Fran. He didn't eliminate anybody else, but I don't want to read too much into it. I think he was just kind of smiling and nodding his head, Mike. But uh, everybody wants to know, you know, he's the he's the talk. And now there's this tweet from Devontae Adams talking about, you know, what's going to happen with uh, the Raiders that the, the Las Vegas people are asking what's going to happen with the Raiders. Right. And it's like, you know, Devontae is he's working on trying to get Aaron Rodgers to come to Las Vegas now. So I, as I'm going through some of these things that Rodgers has said in the last couple of years, um, the one thing I can't get over was this chat that we had that I had with him uh, during a, a, a closed conference thing where we, Aaron Rodgers' memory. I mean, he remembers all of this stuff. Every single, every quip, every quote, everything that was said in the meeting, every, you know, every suggested uh, quote or things that are out there. And we talked about how just incredible his memory is sometimes. Max McGee and Paul Horning and Fuzzy, Willie Davis, Ray Nitschke, you know, that's, that's what I dreamt about being a part of an organization that had that kind of excellence. Vince Lombardi, all the quotes that he he has that you know still resonate to this day. The trophy is named after him for a reason. Our city is nicknamed Title Town for a reason. It's a special place to play. You remember everything. You remember you know Spock lines from Star Trek for the Voyage Home, and. Do you do things like Star Trek through the Wrath of Khan? That's a good one. You probably know the whole dialogue. Do you? I know you've done that probably since as a kid. It's it's fun. It's competitive trivia and all that. But how much of that do you do to be a better football player when it comes to memorizing game plans, seeing things on tape? I mean, is do you work on your mind like that as much as you work on the rest of your your body? Yeah, that's a great question, Mike. And the answer is yes, I do. I think that's a really important part of it. I think the recall is is most important. And I train myself, uh, starting as a younger player, to put images in my mind when I break the huddle so that I can have that positive picture as I walk up the line of scrimmage. It's a matter of uh, seconds or split seconds. But having that that positive thought that comes to your mind, whether it's a, a semi on film or whether it's a play from practice or a play from a previous game, it kind of hits you as you walk the line of scrimmage has always been a, a positive part of my kind of pre-snap routine. It's a, it's a very quick thing that happens, but I think it's something that's very important. The recall, like I said, it is really, really important, not just for myself, but for the receivers and the pass catchers. Demonte has talked about uh, at times um, remembering things from previous games all the way back to 2014 that we had talked about or signaled or gone over that has helped them in the moments or helped them when I give them, you know, an old signal. I look around and there's not many guys who know kind of the old, uh, way uh, the old uh, kind of language of signals uh, so him and I sometimes have our own stuff that kind of only him and I know because the signals that were used in the old offense and the ability to recall those things in the moment is is what makes our connection so special and, and what makes uh, that part of the game a lot of fun so Mike um, you know we all know he's smart we all know he's uh, advanced we'll say um, but I'll, I'll say this I mean he I think also for what he's done on the field, he's also changed some culture off the field, the way, you know, the, the upper management looks at players now, so to speak. He has uh, a, a lot. Um, but when I played that clip this morning, I thought, so, so think of that. You know, Aaron Rodgers has always had a, a couple of these guys around him where he can pull back plays from 2014, right? Mm -hmm. Last right. year, you think he's, he, you know, he, Barely knew Romeo Dobbs from training camp. I mean, he can't, you've taken away half of his tricks, right? Yep. That's what Aaron Rodgers is dealing with. 
Maybe it'd be better if he was just played in the now right now. But that's what might be going on with some of his, you know, long moments before the snap. The other thing that is going on is this. Do you remember, Bill, you and I uh, were sitting, I think it was at Lambeau, and the Bears were it, and now Josh Sitton uh, was playing for the Bears, and I think he was actually inactive. But Aaron Rodgers made a rare appearance two hours before the kick, specifically to stand there on the sidelines and talk to his old guard, Josh Sitton, for like 10, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Right, right. And clearly what was going on was, all right, so what happened? What did they tell you at the end? Because that's what these guys do. And this is the classic moment you talk to Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews, uh, you know, a a tremendous football player. It may be in the discussion for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And here he goes in the fall of 2018, which ended up being his last year, along with McCarthy, to getting cut over the telephone in the following March. Oh, that cash. No, um... No, I mean, it's not odd. I mean, it's, you know, I, I think going into year five of my rookie year, I had, I had a deal, I mean, I had a year left. But, um, you know, obviously going into year 10 is a little different than year five. So I, I've got a good mind in how I, you know, envision the season and, you know, my future. So we'll see what that holds, if that means, you know, back here for a few more years or, or back in my bags, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it obviously was difficult. I think everybody envisions playing, you know, their entire career out with one team, especially having played a decade out there. But um, I was actually headed over there to get a workout in because it was a few days before free agency. They called and let me know that it just wasn't in the cards. So moving forward, wish me the best of luck moving forward. And we wrapped up a 10 year career in about 30 second phone call. Um, You know, and they did. And then that was one of the things that Mike, that, you know, Aaron Rodgers took offense to that after those years and the success they had, that it was a 30 second phone call that said, Hey, don't worry about coming in. You're no longer a green Bay Packer. Um, you know, some guys have gone out that way. Others have decided to say, you know, Hey, I at least get a chance to say my goodbyes and such, but you know, it's, it's, uh, that's why I said, I think the culture has changed. I've heard some people say, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he'll probably wait until the Saturday before the Super Bowl to announce what he wants to do, quit, retire, come back to Green Bay, whatever. And I I don't know, that's the night of the NFL Honors show. But I do know this. There was one Super Bowl we were at. It was 2005. Packers weren't in it. But Donald Driver was down there doing some interviews. His assistant marketing guy, Brian Lammy, is with him. And somebody asked him during an interview, a a Radio Row interview, like you're going to have dozens of next week. So do you think Brett's coming back? He goes, I don't know. know, I've talked to him. I, I don't think he's in it. I don't. I don't think he's coming back. Now, this is 2005. Brett Favre would play for three more years. But there was like 30 cameras waiting for Brett for Donald Driver when he landed back in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what? Favre's retiring? So Donald's been through that grind. And, you know, when Tom Brady said, he told people when he was 29 years old, I want to play till I'm 45. Aaron Rodgers has been telling people he wants to play to 40, which means that's one more year. Donald Driver wanted to play until he was 40. He got cut at age 38 after the 2012 season. I think it's at the end of the day, it's a business, right? I mean, there's, I don't think there's too many guys that would stay with one organization in their entire career. I, I was blessed to be one of those guys. Um, I had my conversation at the end of the year and, and they say, Hey, don't listen. We want to go on a different route. You're, you're 38. You're still playing at a high level. What's your plan? And I said, well, I, I have to look at the room and, and I love my receivers at the time. And I walked up and I told JJ and, Jordy and Cobb and Greg was leaving already. And I said, fellas, I'm going to retire. Um, I'm going to let you guys have the show. I'm going to walk away. And they did. They asked me to play other places. Um, Greg called me when he signed with Minnesota. Come play with me. And, and I told him, I said, I promised the fans that I would never wear another color. And so for that, I was able to walk away knowing that a lot of my younger receivers get the, get the limelight and, and show that they're talents. And so I think when you stay around too long, um, I don't think you, you lose what you have, right? But I think you don't you lose the opportunity to give somebody else an opportunity. And for me, for me to walk away and Greg to leave, I think we gave we gave Jordy, we gave Kyle, we gave James Jones the platform that they have today. Because I think if we stayed around like people do, right, the younger players never get the opportunity to show their talents. And so we were blessed to walk away from the game knowing that we've done everything for the Packers and it was okay. 
Let's do this. We got Mike Clemens on the line with us. Uh, Mike and I are going to be heading out to Arizona along with the rest of the staff coming up. We are broadcasting live at Stoley's Hog Alley, brought to you by our friends at Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the Bill Michael Sports Talk Network. We're in Oconomowoc, terrific fish fry, terrific food, great atmosphere out here, newly renovated, beautiful, beautiful place. If you've been in here before and you come in here now, it's night and day, literally. It's just fantastic. So stop out and say hi. We got a lot more of the Bill Michael Show with Mike Clemens coming up after this. Ready? This is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Bill Michael will resume in five minutes. Michaels will resume in four minutes. Michaels will resume in three minutes. Michael will resume in two minutes. No two ways back. 
Bill Michael will resume in 30 seconds. defensive takeaway you know it's a long season you put so much into it <clears throat> you know we had our chances they went up three scores we battled back with a couple scores defense came up with some big turnovers and you know we had a lot of chances welcome back some painful memories there without a doubt bill michael show we are broadcasting live we're at stoley's hog alley out here in uh, lake country in oconomowoc and uh, they have got the fish fry friday going on there was a there was a wait to get into this place a little while ago and for the uh, for the lunch hour and get the fish fry. And now it's kind of cleared out a little bit, so they're going to make it, you know, again, uh, more accommodating for those that want to get here a little bit early today for the uh, Friday night fish fry. Come on in. Looking forward to it. Mike Clemens brought to you by our friends at the Bay Motel. Bay Motel in Green Bay, quiet and cozy and comfortable and just perfect for a family stay, perfect for a business stay, perfect just to, if you want to go up and, Kind of walk around a little bit and check out uh, maybe the uh, Packers Hall of Fame or something. The Bay Family Restaurant featuring homestyle cooking seven days a week. That's the Bay Family uh, Bay Motel in Green Bay on South Military Avenue. Call them today, 920-494-3441. Or uh, just go online at baymotelgreenbay.com. You can follow them on Facebook, too, the Bay Motel. But uh, 920-494-3441. Mike Clemens joining us uh, yet again. And, Mike, uh, boy, that was a, there's a painful memory that you drudge up, huh? Well, and the thing about it, Bill, is, is, is how many of those memories you've had the last three or four years after Mike McCarthy's exit. Right. And yet you see this Eagles team, this Howie Roseman, man, this guy, he's been with that organization 20 years, and somehow he has avoided, you know, taking the bullet from owner Jeff Lurie, who gives people time. I mean, he gave Andy Reid 14 years to try and get a Super Bowl trophy. You know, I remember covering him in 2005, and, you know, the whole week we were waiting for Terrell Owens to see even get that, the screws in his ankle to heal and be a target for Donovan McNabb, but they lost to a Patriots team. Uh, but here, after winning the Super Bowl in 2017 with, uh, you know, Nick Foles falling, uh, filling in for Carson Wentz, they had some other injuries and still got all the way with great coaching and play calling with Frank Reich and, and with uh, uh, Doug Peterson. Now he's got this guy that was the offensive coordinator for the Colts the Colts now looking for a replacement for Frank Wright for a head coach. And Nick Sirianni, there he is with the number one seed team headed to the Super Bowl just five years later. But yet he's facing a Chiefs team with Andy Reid that's been to the Super Bowl three of the last four years. As far as the Chiefs, um, you know, obviously they've been they've been really good for a long time. Great organization. Andy, uh, Coach Reid's a great coach. Um, and Patrick Mahomes, one of the best players in the world. Um, you know, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, they got, they got good players everywhere and really good coaching. So, um, you know, we're just in our early stages of studying them. Um, you know, you know, having a couple weeks here, we were in our, yesterday was more of a review the game day and doing some of the logistics things. And then, uh, with, with everything, but then today we're in our early stages of studying, studying the chiefs. And that's where, that's where we are right now, but really good team, obviously, as you would expect, um, as, as they're in the Super Bowl. Uh, Mike, uh, you know, there are more than a few players that are still holdovers from the last time the Eagles won a Super Bowl. Not many because they rotate rosters so frequently, but, uh, you know, a guy, uh, or two from uh, from that team that's been to the AFC Championship game numerous times over on the AFC side of things with the Kansas City Chiefs. They know what it's like to play in those big games and to get to this point. And so, you, you know, these two franchises, not that far removed from Super Bowl titles, not that far removed from success. The Eagles did it a little bit different because they rebuilt it, tore it down, rebuilt it, and built it back up and got here. But 
Uh, real interesting between these two teams, uh, the both paths to get to this far. It looks like the Eagles, for the most part, after a 17-game um, regular season, they got a bye. Uh, they're doing okay injury-wise. Landon Dickerson, Lane Johnson, the offensive line should be good to go. Avante uh, Maddox is the, on defense is their corner slot guy. Now, he missed like the last three games with that toe injury. And then today at practice, uh, Ben was telling me they showed him with a, a boot on his leg. Uh, so they'll have to figure out what they're going to do with that if he can't go on the secondary. But the answer, the other interesting thing is the turnover in that locker room, the turnover with the coaches, and yet you're back in the Super Bowl. So like a guy like you know the tight end, Dallas Goddard, who, who he, he got drafted, he came on the year right after the last time the Eagles won the Super Bowl, and he's, he's talked about the turnover that he's seen on the roster. You know, I looked up to all those guys. Um, obviously, getting to the Super Bowl is the pinnacle of this sport. Uh, winning the Super Bowl is the pinnacle of this sport. So got to learn from a lot of guys that were here right after it. Got to hear uh, their stories, how amazing it was, things like that. So it just made me even more hungry to uh, get there. And, you know, here we are. So there you go. Uh, and then you've got, you know, some guys uh, on these two rosters. Obviously, it's a very close, tight-knit group. They know each other. They're familiar with one another. They've got stories and backstories and stuff. All that stuff's going to be explored this week as we get into Super Bowl week, you know? A lot of good people, a lot of good players and coaches coming out of Mississippi the last several years. And one of them is A.J. Brown, who at the start of the year with the Titans, you thought, and hey, this is a possible AFC contender. Uh, but, you know, they didn't make it. The Bills didn't make it. It's the Chiefs again. And they've got a guy there named Willie Gay, of course, their linebacker, who's from Starksville, Mississippi. And the same town, same high school as A.J. Brown, who the Eagles made that huge trade for. And A.J. talked about that. Truly a blessing to be on the biggest stage of football. So blessed to, to play this game and to know Willie and play high school ball with him, competed against him, college, and growing up like five minutes where where we live from each other it means everything it means everything to the city of starkville i know they're proud of, of both of us we lived in the country so uh it just shows like the, to the kids like you can make it out you know you can do whatever you want to do you put your mind to it take take the right route you know mike uh when you really get down to the brass tacks of this uh both quarterbacks very very good but the quarterback that has the experience obviously is patrick mahomes jalen hurts coming into this with a lot of expectation but patrick mahomes is a guy that's been there done that many 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 big situations and so if you got to go with the quarterback position you kind of give the nod to kansas city yeah and not only you know if you're playing tougher teams but you know you've you know you've lost some of your key players you know uh, like Tariq Hill, who you know, goes to the dolphins and the other thing is that you you're losing your own players like you lose three receivers early in the afc championship game so patrick mahomes says he knows though having this is like you know the third time he's been to this level if he can lead a team in the fourth quarter, make a fourth quarter comeback now to win a Super Bowl if needed. Uh, when you've been in some big games now a, a couple years in a row, you've learned from your mistakes. And I felt like the year before, I let one state kind of compound into to two, three, or whatever it was. Whereas this game, this this last one, instead of worrying about, man, I made a huge mistake and we probably could have had a good chance of not putting the game away, but giving ourselves a, a big lead, let's not magnify it. Let's just, just move on to the next play, continue what you were doing throughout the entire game. and. Um, we didn't necessarily have a lot of, a ton of yards after that, but I didn't make another mistake. And then whenever the time came, I was able to make a play in order to, to get us in the field goal range. Mike, uh, you know, also when you get to the coaching side of things, Andy Reed, uh, been, you know, been there, done that. And there's, uh, injuries to consider and, and manipulation of the rosters, obviously who will and will not play, how much time do they need to get ready? I mean, game plans, but Andy Reed, uh, you know, he's kind of looking at a little bit of legacy too here too. He's been to Super Bowls with both of these teams. Now he gets to face off against the Eagles, but if he gets another win, that boy, that that really elevates you as a head coach. Everybody treated the Eagles like a Cinderella team, and yet the guys that were actually watching the tape, you know, by September or October saying, man, that Eagles offensive line, my God. I mean, look how hard-hitting these guys are. And mm -hmm. they just kept winning games and winning games. So Andy Reid, though, I mean, he's losing a corner and three receivers in the AFC Championship game. Listen to the list of injuries he's dealing with to go up against a tough physical team like the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, injuries, uh, McCole Hardman uh, will not practice today. I, uh, he did a great job of playing in that game. 
the other day. Uh, very courageous effort, and uh, my heart goes out to the kid because he, he busted his tail. He is hurting, though. Juju had, uh, has some knee swelling. He won't practice. The Jerry Sneeds and the concussion protocol, he won't practice. And then uh, Kadarius Tony, he won't practice with the ankle sprain, but um, he's, he's close um, and doing well. Actually, I did the walkthrough today. So, um, listen, we look forward to the challenge of playing the Eagles. Uh, good football team, great football team. And, um, you know, they've got tremendous talent. They've uh, got good coaching. And it's a, it's a good organization. So um, and I guess you don't get to this point unless, unless that's the case. Uh, so that's, um, they're, they're, they really do a nice job. Um, Mike, let's do this. We're going to step away, take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up. Mike Clemens and I, Ben Kenny, chatting a little bit about this upcoming Super Bowl. Don't forget, we're going to be live there beginning tomorrow. We'll be live in the show all next week, but uh, we all land there tomorrow out in Phoenix, Arizona. Stay tuned. we got a lot more of the Bill Michael Show. Another segment live at Stoley's Hog Alley out here in Oconomowoc. It's coming up next. Ready? This is the Bill Michael Show on the Wisconsin Sports Zone Radio Network. Everywhere you look, from groceries to utilities to gas, prices keep going up. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin can dramatically help lower your energy costs year-round by replacing drafty windows and doors in as little as six weeks. And now you can save even more by taking advantage of 0% interest for up to 48 months when you lock in your prices by February 28th. I'm Gina Della from Pella. Bring the love of Wisconsin's outdoors in through the beauty and quality craftsmanship of Pella Windows and Doors. Whether you're updating or upgrading the look and comfort of your home, Pella has extensive lines of customizable options to meet your needs and your budget, no matter the season. Replacing drafty windows and doors can dramatically lower your energy costs. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin offers some of the most energy efficient windows in the industry. Decide to keep the cold outside where it belongs. Lock in your prices by February 28th and get 0% interest for up to 48 months. Visit PellaWI.com. Bill Michaels will resume in three minutes. Michaels will resume in two minutes. Michaels will resume in one minute.
Bill Michaels will resume in 30 seconds. Accepting a Lifetime Achievement Emmy, he said, just take 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are. Over to our two-day champion on the end, Scott, did you come up with the correct response? Who wanted to kick that field goal? <laughs> that is a great question. It should, be, should, be, should be correct, but uh, unfortunately for this, uh, this game today, that's incorrect. Oh, I remember that moment, and I remember just killing Matt LaFleur for kicking that damn field goal. Aaron Rodgers on Jeopardy. Welcome back to the program, and for those that are watching on the Bud Light live stream, we are broadcasting live at uh, Stoley's Hog Alley out here in Oconomowoc, man. Good, good stuff. Mike Clemens on the line. Mike, that was a, that was a, that was a moment in which we all kind of cringed a little bit knowing Aaron Rodgers, waiting to find out what he was, uh, what, how he was going to respond to all of that, that that night on Jeopardy. And there was that line that Roger said uh, on Tuesday when he was talking about what he liked about Rich Bisaccia. And he said, you know, this is a guy who doesn't worry about whether players like him. He worries about whether they respect him. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what players are looking for. Right. And you, you, you got to think that, that uh, Rogers is talking about probably Joe Barry. And that re really kind of fits Joe's profile. Or if maybe, you know, it's a, it's, you know, he's, he's nodding to, you know, Matt LaFleur, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be more aggressive with some of these guys. If, if we're ever going to get, you know, to the next level next year. Mike, uh, I, I know we only got about a minute or two here, but as we, uh, you know, head to Super Bowl, and that's going to be certainly the story, but the minute it's done and Roger said he would respect the fact that the Eagles and the Kansas city chiefs are really in the spotlight right now. But after that's done, my, my guess is that the speculation is really going to begin to swirl as we get towards the end of the month. And uh, as to what the, the Packers are going to do, what Rodgers is going to do, when he's going to notify them, I I think we're then on on Rodgers' watch, aren't we? Yeah, but uh, also you notice the things that Rodgers has said and the things that have been thrown out there from ESPN, and there's been no response from the Packers, nothing. Right. But you know something, the people keep forgetting. Ryan Gutekunst holds a lot of the cards in this between the contract he's got between what he knows about Jordan Love's potential and, and the calls that, that they're, they are getting, the offers that they're getting to see if they want to pick up, you know, a couple of first round and second round picks for either Aaron Rodgers or maybe even for Jordan Love. Who knows if there's somebody desperate out there. But for the game, you know, it's, it's this really powerful young group of guys uh, with the Eagles under a second-year head coach up against the, the most experienced head coach outside of Belichick and Andy Reid. But Andy Reid's got, you know, McCole Hardman. That was the guy who was supposed to replace Tariq Hill. Now, Hill was faster. I, I saw a tape of Hill beating him in practice, and those two guys used to argue. But Hardman's only 24 years old. Right. But, you know, he's been out since week nine, and now he's not going to be in the game, according to what Andy Reid said with his pelvis injury. So, you know, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes against a very physical Eagles team with not all his weapons. Mike, uh, I'm looking forward to heading out to Arizona. We are uh, going to be meeting up at the airport in a short period of time. But uh, anything in particular that uh, fans that are going to be listening all next week are going to want to look for when it comes to you and I? I think that we're going to get to hear more legends of football uh, come back to this Super Bowl because nobody was at Tampa. Few came out to L.A., but that's what I'm hearing is a lot of the more of the legends, Hall of Famers, will come to visit us in Arizona, and that's going to be great. It should be good. My pleasure as always. I'll see you at the airport in a bit, bud. I'll be the one in the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> All right, that'll do it. Hey, thanks to the staff and management and everybody here at Stoli Sog Alley. Thanks to Jeff and Alicia. They're such great people. Keep supporting this business. After the renovation, I said this building is beautiful, and I can't wait for the summer to get here to get upstairs on the deck. The food is awesome. It is a Friday fish fry, perch, walleye, lighter fare as well. They have shrimp. They have clam chowder. You name it, and they've got great food all throughout the rest of the week, and it's a lot of fun. Thanks to them for having us out here. Thanks to all of you for participating and hanging out with us. Time for us to go. The next time we talk, we will be in Phoenix, Arizona, live from Radio Row, uh, bringing you all the fun and frivolity.